Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, we have the wonderful Dr. Timothy Thrapp here. And uh, today is April 19th. And boy, do we have some really good stuff uh, to talk to the body of Christ about. And um, I am going to start off uh, with a prayer. Uh, actually, I will display the prayer and Dr. Thrapp um, will be uh, reading it. So just let me get that uh, queued up here. Um, and while you're doing that, I'll mention, brother, well, welcome everyone to the program, by the way. And I'll mention, this is a prayer that Brother Hagen does that Sister Maria felt led that we should all pray from time to time. And I think it's awesome. Brother Hagen was a prophet of God, and he's up in heaven now. Uh, but uh, we'll put it up on the screen. And this, well, we could talk about Instagram first if you want. Um, mm -hmm. It's up to you, Maria, Sister Maria. Yeah. And let me, uh, well, I thought I was... Um... Well, why don't we talk about yeah, we, the Instagram since it came up? Since you got it. Since you got it. Okay, so she's got up here, and this is the huge news. Right now, we're one day before the one, the 1260 days. Uh, we're one day before in Israel. If you look at Israel, in the United States, you might say, well, it's, it's a day and a half or whatever. But, uh, yeah, and, and if you look at Israel, we're, we're already in the, the 20th, which we're here also we're in the 20th, where I am. I'm in the Philippines. And the United States, most of our viewers... Uh, you can say you're about a day and a half before the 1,260 days starts. But that is the Great Tribulation. So how fitting that they announce this, uh, the WEF announces and advises that you must get this thing implanted under your skin to participate in society. Uh, and so uh, you can see where it's headed. And uh, it's come out, this, this announcement came out just today. As far as I know, if anybody sees a different date, let me know. But uh, as far as I know, it was just today. And we just happened to be one day before the, the 1,260 day Great Tribulation. The Great Tribulation starts tomorrow uh, here in my time. And again, you guys in the United States, you're a little behind because Israel is pretty much on my time, just like four hours difference or something like that, but maybe five. But they're on the same day. We're, we're 20th here and we're 20th in Israel. And you're in the 19th over where you are. And the Great Tribulation starts on the day that Jesus went to his Great Tribulation or went through his Great Tribulation when he was on earth for us. He did that for us willingly. He laid down his life. And so that is usually called uh, Communion Day or Mass or, or the Last Supper. And, uh, and that's the same day that he suffered and died. Uh, on the cross, he was beaten, and you know you can call it crucifixion day if you want. Um, so it's the same day he died for us, and so his tribulation starts exactly the same day as our great tribulation, and uh, which the great tribulation, by the way, is, ten, is what the Lord told me. It's roughly ten times worse, it's between seven times and ten times worse, depending on what country you're in, than the tribulation period. And those that got it real easy. He told me this too. Those that got it real easy during the tribulation are going to get it worse during the great tribulation. So I'd say that's the United States. The uh, United States had it pretty easy compared to over here. They were shooting people in the head just for not wearing their mask right, literally leaving them dead on the street. And if they didn't, one bullet didn't kill them, they'd shoot them again uh, three or four times in the head until they're dead. And, uh, and they'd just leave them there in the street, which is a Muslim custom. And here that we had a Muslim president, uh, just so everybody knows. I wondered why they were doing that. Uh, leaving people in the street, and then I found out that's a Muslim custom. Uh, so uh, when somebody gets shot, you know, they, especially the people they don't like, which I guess they don't like anybody who wasn't wearing the mask right. Uh, and they already started doing lockdowns again here uh, and um, about two weeks ago, and I did announce it. And so obviously something's up, and they know it is the Great Tribulation. They're they're the ones doing it. You know, they're the ones doing a lot of it. You know, they have earthquake machines that make earthquakes. They have all they have weather weather machines that make weather and destroy you know unbelievable amounts of destruction. Um, yeah. So anyway, so this is what they're planning. WEF says CBCs must be implanted under your skin if you want. If you want to participate in society, it's not if you want one, it's if you want to participate in society, which means, of course, buying and selling and even going out freely out of your house or whatever, and eventually they'll come right into your house, too. 
So eventually they'll be coming after every single Christian and then you got to be prepared. So now's the time to learn the power of God because we have to decide, um, you know, we have to decide we want to call down fire on them or not. And I, I'm going to. Uh, I don't know if anybody else will or not. But uh, if you got the power of God, if you have miracles on demand, uh, which you should have, everybody that don't have, you need to get busy and start studying Brother Hagin. Everyone should have miracles on demand. In other words, when you need a miracle, God gives it to you. Uh, and sometimes all you pray is, oh, Lord. I remember when my car was flipping over. That's all I prayed. Oh, Lord. And he, and he sent an angel and tackled the back end of the car and set it upright. And we landed on all fours. And it was uh, it was caused by a, a really a really stupid mechanic. I don't know what else word to use. It was an idiot mechanic that left the, the wheels loose on the back, one of the wheels loose on the back. And it came loose and threw the whole car in the air when you're going like 60 miles an hour about to flip over and so uh, God sometimes all you have the time to pray is oh God oh Lord or uh, Lord help me or Jesus or something like that and God uh, God sent that angel something collided with our car while we were up in the air and we were flipping over forward and we were if it landed on the top which, which it was going to do going 55 miles an hour we'd have probably both been dead and probably it broke our necks or whatever you know and uh, uh, me and the mechanic the man now the mechanic deserved it <laughs> because he's the one that swore up and down he put everything back together right and he didn't i i asked him three times did you put everything back oh yeah i checked it. did you check it twice oh yeah i checked it twice check it three times oh yeah i checked it three times. well you're gonna go for a ride a test ride with me and i took him for a test ride and uh his uh mechanic stuff fell apart it's he it did not have the the nuts tight on the back wheel at all the finger tight that's it and uh yeah so he didn't check anything he's lying but um, anyway, God is good. He sent that angel. The angel tackled the car. When the car landed all fours, we had a big dent on the back trunk, the back trunk, uh, because somebody hit it while we were up in the air, flipping over. We were flipping over forward. When that, when that tire came off the back, it threw the whole car in the air somehow, and that's a weird accident. But the angels were there. One of them came just in time and smashed into the back end of the car, and that dent was still there on the car. So. Anyway, so God can God can give you miracles on demand, and that means when you need a miracle, God will do it if you can believe and if you're walking with Him. Uh, so it's important we all learn to believe and walk with Him, and we should have miracles every day. If you don't have miracles every day, then you need to get you know start studying Brother Hagen. Um, yeah, my teachings I teach some on this as well. All right, so that covers that pretty well. If anybody has questions or comments, go ahead, sister. Uh, um, so let's switch over so you can pray uh, over ev us and everyone in the chat for um, the uh, the gifts of the Spirit. So you're going to see this come Amen. on your uh, screen. Amen. Amen. So this is a prayer for manifestation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit by Prophet Kennedy Hagan. Okay. Yeah. All right. So everyone lift up your hand and say it out loud and let your heart agree with it. Heavenly Father, thank you for your holy written word. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the gifts and manifestations of the Holy Ghost. Father, we desire all nine of those gifts to be made manifest among us. The revelation gifts, the word of wisdom gifts, the word of knowledge gifts, the discerning of spirits gifts, the vocal gifts, prophecy, diverse kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. We desire them all. We pray especially at this time that there would be a special manifestation, an extraordinary manifestation of the power gifts, special faith, the working of miracles, gift of healing. Grant us, O Lord, that your servants shall be enabled to speak thy word with boldness by stretching forth your hand to heal the signs and the wonders, the gifts of healing, the working of miracles, the special faith with the manifestations in a greater measure than we have ever seen or heard before or know anything about. Grant it, O oh Lord, in the name that is above every name, the, Lord, the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now, Father, we claim it. We count it done and we praise you, Father, and we continue to pray along that lines we thank you, Father. We thank you for the answer. We thank you for the manifestation. We thank you for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay. Yeah. 
All right. Well, God bless you all. It's that's a great prayer, sis. So we have a, a word from the Lord too that we wanted to share, or, or oh, another yeah. word of the Bible. Yes, yeah. sir. Hang on while I uh, go over there. Let me go here. And whoop. we lost you there. Oh, hang on. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm still yeah, okay. here. But, okay, there yeah. we go. Um, let me well uh, let me switch over to. Um, I am I am getting much better at this. Okay, believe yeah, it or not. Yeah, Jesus' name. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Here's some good scriptures. Yes. So. Do you, um, do you want me to read these? Yeah. Let me uh, okay. let me go over here to um, to this to the start. Okay. Well, these, this is Romans chapter, oh no, you got Matthew now. Okay, we split, okay, very good. Yeah. It says, if ye then, if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. Now again, being evil is probably not the best translation here. It's talking about being carnal or na natural minded, and and uh, a lot of people are. And that's basically what he's, and I believe this is uh, Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 7. Yeah, Sermon mm -hmm. on the Mount. So he's talking to a large group of people. And most people do live as natural people rather than supernatural beings that we are. Uh, so then if you, being natural or carnal, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Heavenly Father, which is in Heaven, give good gifts to those who ask Him? So that's really glorious to think about that. Uh, God is good, and people need to realize that. Ro Epistle to Romans. For the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. Romans 11, 29. The gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. You want me to read the next one too? Yes. I, I kind of want to talk about this. So when God gives you a okay. gift, he will never take it away. It's yours. That's what that Amen. repentance means. He, he, he will never repent that he gave you a gift. Amen. 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 Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Uh, having then gifts diversary, diverse, differing, excuse me, differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophesy or prophecy, Pro uh, whether yeah. prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, yeah, according to our proportion of faith. Follow after love, agape, and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. So. Prophecy is a pretty important gift, is what Paul's saying there, and uh, we do get prophecies all the time, and uh, yeah, and they all come true pretty much. Uh, if you look in the, you can look back 14, 15, 16 years, 17 years, maybe 20 years, yeah, 20, 20 some, some years on our on our programs. Anyway, even so, ye for mu for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. 1 Corinthians 14, 12. Yeah, amen. Amen. Do um, you want me to read all that? That's uh, It's so small, I can't. Oh, my, my oh you head. can't. Let me let me see if I can put it into uh, slideshow mode and if it'll well, show up. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, There seems to be no way for me to make this bigger on my screen uh, that I can figure out. Um, okay. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe there's... Let me just try something. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, I, I found a function on on uh, what do you call it? A function on uh, uh, MacBook. A function of MacBook. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brother, I would not have you remain ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts by the same Spirit, and there are diversities of ministration by the same Lord, and there are diversities of operations, but it is by the same God who worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given the Spirit of wisdom, and to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, and to another by the same Spirit, and and to another faith by the same Spirit. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. And to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, and to another the working of miracles 
and to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he wills. So that's talking about the Holy Spirit, gives as he wills to different people, these different gifts, uh, different bodies, members of the body of Christ. For as the body is one, so and has many members, also the members that are of the one body, talking about us, the body of Christ, being many are of one body and also is Christ. So it's a very good uh, teaching, sis, and uh, a lot of people uh, don't understand it, but basically God gives uh, many different gifts uh, as they need. You know, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, words of understanding, uh, and uh, and all this stuff is here. You know, it's it's miracles of faith, and God speaks through all these things. When he when, when my car is flipping over forward and I'm about to get killed uh, and he suddenly sends an angel and they tackle the back end of my car and it comes down all fours, that's God speaking. That's one of the ways he speaks. <laughs> People wonder how he speaks. That's one of the ways he speaks. He speaks in many ways. Uh, he speaks in, he's, what is he telling us in that situation? He's telling us he loves us and he's there to help us. And he's there to protect us in every danger. And that's what he's telling us. And I've been teleported probably uh, 200 times and 190 of those to get away from danger to avoid danger, usually traffic. Somebody's going to, you know, either intentionally try to kill me or accidentally, you know, or, or maybe I'm about to slide off the road. That's happened where I'm about to slide off the road because icy roads, you're going down a mountain, it's very steep and there's no guardrail, and you're about to slide off the road and God will suddenly teleport the whole car to another location uh, far away. Uh, and you're driving on a straight road all of a sudden. And, you know, God can do these things. Uh, it's not hard for him. The wheels are straight, you know. Uh, yeah, so anything's possible. Possible. Okay, thank you, Seth. We hear you typing. Um, oh, sorry. Do you want to add anything? <laughs> no, I was responding to Sister Doreen, who said, I have a strange feeling uh, about April um, 22nd. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's tomorrow. The, the 1,260 days, well, it's, it's a day and a half from everybody. The 21st is the, is the first day of the 1260. If everything comes to pass as he told me, which it will, uh, he told me that October 3rd is the rapture date, and if you subtract 1,260 from that, it comes out to uh, tomorrow, the 21st of April. And uh, unless I'm wrong, if anybody can double-check that, please double-check it. Uh, you can check it online and tell me if I'm wrong. But uh, I checked it online on three different, well, probably ten different programs this time to get it exact, and it came out to one day before the Passover, which I thought that's not the, that's not a holy day, and then the Lord said, "No, that is a holy day. That's the day Jesus said, keep doing this in remembrance of me.' So many denominations do celebrate it once a year, or I don't know, celebrate or commemorate it once a year. Uh, commemorate it. Celebrate is not the right word. Commemorate it as a holy day. It's the only holy day that Jesus told us to do. He didn't tell us to celebrate his birthday." Not that it's wrong to celebrate his birthday, but he didn't tell us that. He didn't tell us to celebrate his bar mitzvah. He didn't tell us to celebrate the day he's baptized. Uh, he told us to celebrate the day of his death, uh, the day of his sacrifice, the day of his great tribulation. Uh, yeah, and so, yeah, so that's a very fitting that our great tribulation starts on the same day as his great tribulation. It's also very fitting that the very day before that, the WEF and, and the bankers and all that came out with their mark of the beast and they're telling everybody you got to get it if you want to participate in society anymore. So uh, at some point now it's an ad, they're giving advice and then those that don't get it, uh, they'll just make it a law and those that still don't get it, they'll just send them out and send people out to arrest them. And uh, so it's coming and I'll be calling down fire on them and we'll see if their guns are bigger than God's guns. And uh, we'll see what happens. It won't be boring. It'll be interesting. It's exciting. It's exciting. I think we all volunteered for this time, by the way. Some of, some people say, oh, I don't want to live during the Great Tribulation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think you volunteered for it before you came here. I really do. Uh, so so uh, I think it's, I, I think we all volunteered for this. Somewhere, somewhere in this. Yeah, somewhere in the spirit realm, we all stood up and said, yeah. pick me, pick me, pick me, right? That's right, that's right, that's right. I want to go to Earth, I want to be a baby, I want to, I want to live, I want to, yeah. And, and I know the time is coming, I, we probably knew, we probably knew the tribulation was coming. And uh, we wanted to live near the, in, in through, or whatever, great tribulation, we wanted this mm -hmm. test. 
and be faithful even unto death, and he will give us the crown of life. And he who endures to the end is the one that will be saved. These are excellent scriptures that I'm quoting. And uh, yeah, so when when do you how long do you have to endure till the, either until you die the end, in other words, until you die, or uh, until the six thousand years is up, which is October third, and then we're out of here. And so either way, we endure to the end till Jesus comes back. You can say it that way. Uh, yeah, and God is good. That's exciting stuff uh, for everybody out there. Uh, yeah, exciting stuff. So I have, uh, I have uh, one more uh, page of scripture, um, which I think you can read here. Sure, thank you. Okay. The gifts of the Holy Ghost. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, second prophets, thirdly teachers. After that miracles, then gifts of healing, then helps, then governments, then diversities of tongues. Now are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet I shall show you a more excellent way. Is this old King James, honey? I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, I, just, I, I usually pick King James, uh, but if you um, want a different. Um, we're not romantically involved in case anybody no, wants no, to no, know. No. <laughs> so, that was a slip of the we're tongue. Sister. I do that with children. The children are always helping me, and I tend to call them honey, especially the, the sweet one. You know, sometimes even the boy. I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't, so, I shouldn't do that. So I, it's a slip so, of the tongue, so sorry so, about that. That's uh, right. It's just an endearing word. I've had waitresses come over to me, not here, but in the United States, and say, why do you like to order honey? And so it, some people use that more e easily than other people, so I do apologize. I try not to do that, but uh, anyway, it gets me in trouble. <laughs> so anyway, so, so, so I, I, I put this um, slide together mostly because, um, you know, the, we're in a, such a time as this where we need to be really pressing into uh, uh, Jesus and, and asking the Father and the Holy Spirit for these gifts, you know. Um, we can't go into the tribulation not having these gifts. And, uh, Amen. Never, Amen. So. Amen. Good, good point, sis. Good point. Excellent. All right. Uh, is that everything you want to share on the scriptures? Yeah, that's it. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, excellent. Excellent. All right. Well, let's. Uh, what, what do we want to cover tonight? Do you know? Did you keep well, track of uh, it? Or? I guess um, how the Holy Spirit moves uh, or has moved in our lives. Um, maybe if some of the um, uh, folks in the chat want to dial in and, um, and share their experience about uh, how the Holy Spirit has moved in their lives. Do they have gifts? that they would like to tell us about and share and let us know. Um, uh, again, we're one body and all these gifts work together for good. Um, Amen. Amen. Yeah. So yeah, feel free to call in the numbers on the screen, 269-993-4009. And I know there is uh, one brother that is going to call in in about 40 minutes. He said he was out driving. And he's had some amazing, uh, interesting things happening already. Uh, and so he's going to share what's happening. Uh, I say already. You know, the Great Tribulation type stuff is happening everywhere. Uh, Sister Lorena says, can you please give me a link to the prayer of Brother Kenneth E. Hagan? She, she says Kennedy Hagan. It's not Kennedy. It's Kenneth E. He goes with the middle initial. And the reason I use that E is because there is an A, a Brother Kenneth A. Hagan also who's uh, his son but he doesn't have near the anointing as the father uh, so um, you know it's like daylight and dark honestly so uh, that's why I always make it clear uh, E. Hagen uh, and you can find him on YouTube if you know the spelling of his name Kenneth and then letter E and then Hagen and he has 500 hours of teachings at least we downloaded 500 hours of different teachings and we sent them to all of our missionaries we have about 200 missionaries and so they all have because a lot of them do not have internet access a lot of them are so poor they don't even have phones 
but most of them have phones or some kind of player. Uh, you know, I'd say, yeah, I'd say about half of them have phones, and the rest of them have some. Well, we sent a player with it, so they have a player. So we have a little tiny thing. We got it for like four dollars a piece. A little thing you plug in your your thumb drive, and you can listen all day long. You turn up the volume, and it worked great. We tested five, six different ones for them, and decided which one to send everybody. We have about 200, 100 missionary teams. They usually go out two by two. So, uh, and, uh, you know, that, keep, that number keeps growing. We are training missionaries here. And so uh, I recommend everybody uh, stock up on that. In other words, download your own 500 hours and put it on something you like to play. Because we will be, if we don't take that chip, you won't be able to pay any of your bills. Uh, and eventually they'll send people for you to collect you, uh, soldiers or, or policemen at your door. And, uh, you know, so you need to get prepared now, uh, mentally, spiritually, physically. Uh, and again, miracles on demand. This brother teaches that. Kenneth E. Hagen teaches miracles on demand. And uh, it's called divine healing. It's called uh, how to walk in the power of God and uh, our authority as believers and so on. And so we need to all be listening uh, hour or two a day of that kind of teaching and again I teach on it also there's not too many others there's others that try to teach on it but they don't do near as good of a job in my opinion Charles Gabbs did pretty good uh, he, yeah, he taught on the power and authority of the, of the children of God um, yeah a lot of them get into um, other things way too much like you know like getting rich in this world that's not that's not of God uh, if, well if you are rich in this world you should always be using it for the kingdom of God and, uh, you know, there are times I've dealt with more money than most people would believe, but uh, I don't consider any of it mine. I consider all of it God. And we, we, you know, we spend it as fast as we get it, blessing the children. We take care of a lot of children and a lot of elderly as well. So and that's what Jesus said you're supposed to do. Is, and so it's easy when you got hundreds of children, it's easy to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars every month. It's, it's just... Uh, it's just amazing how fast, uh, you know, and, and the needs of everybody. You know, if we're not taking, well, nobody's living in luxury. Uh, yeah, I have just one car right now, and it runs on water. It doesn't, uh, but it's a very simple Toyota, nothing fancy about it whatsoever. And uh, and, and we run, you know, we, we do teach advanced technologies, and I'm that's one of my areas of expertise. And so it's it's not too hard for me to get a car running on water, 100% water. Uh, but... Um, that's if you want more interested in that type of technology, you can go to our archives, which are on Odyssey, and you'll learn more about it. But we do teach pretty freely, but some things are business deals, and those business deals are not free. But um, um, but anyway, yeah. All right. Well, that goes. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, we're going to share a little bit about the power of God. Okay. So God speaks in many different ways. How God speaks. How God works. And as you grow in faith, as you study his word, and that's why that prayer was so important that Sister Maria uh, found in, in Brother Hagin's teachings. If we study his word and meditate on his word, then the power comes. As you more, The more you believe. See, what happens is people think thousands of thoughts every day. Some people say 80,000 thoughts or 8,000 thoughts. Anyway, somewhere in that range, thousands of thoughts every day. And most of them are negative. If you check people, probably 80% of them, 60, 80, 90% are negative. And it's called worrying. It's called, it's even just a slight negative thought. We have to be careful because when we put things in a negative light, a negative way, that's the opposite of faith. And the opposite of faith is going to cancel out your faith. It's actually going to strengthen the enemy's desire, his ability to attack you. I almost never get attacked directly by uh, demons. Almost never. Um, I think one time my whole life, uh, I'm trying to think if there was more, but uh, not directly, but indirectly, like the uh, mechanic that didn't put everything together and soar up and down, he did, and then it almost get killed. You know, that's definitely a demonic attack, uh, and so that's an indirect demonic attack. It's not directly. I mean, in other words, the demons are working through that mechanic. Uh, yeah, so indirectly, yeah, we get attacked every single day, probably a dozen, and maybe more. If you count all the children, count all the elderly, count all the missionaries. Yeah, maybe it's hundreds of attacks every day, maybe thousands, but uh, they don't bother me. I enjoy kicking the Lord. I have enjoyed kicking the Lord of darkness, the devil. I enjoy kicking his butt. I, I chase him around in my dreams, honestly, and kick his butt every time I catch him. It's the honest truth. It's, I know it's a strange a strange bunch of dreams, but I get them regularly where I'm hunting the devil and I'm finding him. And they're always demons. I'll kick them all. I'll kick them all. 
you know, Senator Dale. Uh, you know, so people need to have this right, this right kind of uh, theology. When you get the wrong kind of theology, the devil's chasing you instead of you chasing him. Uh, we want to put the devil on the run. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Does it say he'll flee from God? No, it says he's going to flee from you if you resist him. If, you, if we learn who we are in Christ, and I think a lot of us need to study the scriptures that say in him, you know, Christ in you, the hope of glory, and, and there's some that say through you. There's many like this. I think I listed them all, and I think there were over 100. Uh, there's many, many scriptures. You should go through the Bible and list them all. And, and Brother Higgin teaches on this, and there are lists out there. You can Google it and find the list from somebody else. But who we are in him and through, and through him. And, and through him we can do all things. The scripture says that, basically. Uh, I have strength through him for all things. I have strength through him. That's the scripture. Uh, yeah, so people need to know who we are. In other words, we each need to know who we are as a people. Everybody out there, all the brothers. And, and even the dark side, even people in general should say, wow, that's the guy that, you know, laid hands on this so-and-so and they were healed and, and, and he lives up in that mountain, and he's, 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 a lot of people are scared to go up there, and for good reason, that mountain shakes, and, 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 and the you know, lightning of God hits that mountain, and God talks above that mountain, and all, all kinds of things. So people need to know what's going on on this planet. It's, uh, you know, it's, and in heaven. I mean, heaven is, is, is almost here. We're only three and a half years away. It's, it's incredible. Uh, it's, uh, it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, exciting stuff. So thank you all for your comments. Everybody's welcome to call in. Uh, let's see. So, so hopefully, Lorena, you got your question answered about uh, Kenneth E. Hagen. We are trying to do more call-ins and questions on this program than the other one. The other one, the last half hour, uh, usually. But here, we're trying to we're trying to kind of keep it open almost for the whole two hours, uh, at least an hour uh, every time on this program. Depends if we have a guest or not which we are planning to have some guests in the future. Uh, Sister Kip, if you're listening, we'd love to have you on. And Sister Mary and Sister uh, Jerry will be our guests returning. And anybody else that would like to be a guest, let us know. I talked to another sister, uh, I think her name was Celine, yesterday, that she'd like to be a guest. So uh, we're going we're gonna to work it out where we try to have one guest uh, you know, at least once a week. We're on twice a week on this, on this platform, which is YouTube. And uh, we do have another video to share, If you, I think. Did we have another video? Yeah. yeah. We can go ahead and share it, and then we'll go to the questions and comments. Let me finish with Sister Lorena. So the, if you can type in Kenneth with a T-H at the end, Kenneth, and then E, letter E, and then Hagen, H-A-G-I-N, not E-N, but I-N, uh, and type that in on YouTube, and you'll find, uh, you'll find there's, again, there's probably probably at least 500 different teachings. So it's probably come up 50,000 or something. But anyway, 500 different teachings on YouTube, 500 hours of different teachings on YouTube. Uh, just Kenneth E. Hagen. So hopefully that answers your question. And he is a, definitely the best one to listen to on the power of God. And Charles, Charles Caps does a good job. So you can type in him, Charles Caps, and uh, just put faith and you'll find it. Same with Hagen, if you put faith, and he is a prophet. Caps, I don't know about Caps, but uh, Hagen was a prophet of God. Uh, and uh, and so, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, we, we read the one first apostles, then prophets. So that, that shows the, the order kind of that God looks at the Bible, looks at, excuse me, from the Bible, that he looks at people. He looks at his workers. And if they're genuine apostles, now there's people running around, they're not apostles. And brother, sister, sister Maria pointed this out to me the other day, said, she's, Found some ladies that we were trying to analyze if they're really apostles or not, and uh, I think we came to the conclusion that they've probably never been uh, they probably never been in, in another country to, as a missionary, uh, or they've never given you know apostle means missionary by the way sent out from God is what it means. If you go to the basic Greek, so uh, you know if they're only on YouTube, I I wonder if you can claim to be an apostle if you're only on YouTube. Now of course if God tells you you are, then you are, but. Uh, I wonder if some of these people really hear from the Lord or if they're just hearing from their own ideas. Um, yeah. Or there are deceiving spirits also that will try to get people to, you know, claim things that are not correct, you know, not from the Lord. So we all need to keep humble. And uh, But, yeah, the Lord, the Lord uh, puts apostles as very important in his church. I'd say number one, the way this is worded here. Um, 
uh, yeah, it, it says first apostles, uh, you know, so, you know, in his church, he has an organization. In other words, if the, if the, uh, if the teachers need help, they should go to the prophets and if the prophets need help, they should go to the apostles and so on. Uh, you know, we're all here to help each other. We're all here to bless each other and, and raise up the body of Christ. And, and even the least little ones, we don't want anybody lost. And God is that way, and we should be that way too. And we should be willing to serve. The, the greatest among us, the apostles and the prophets, should be the ones serving. They should be the ones washing the baby's butts, washing the, washing the diapers, washing the, willing to do anything that's needed. And if we're not willing to do anything that's needed, then are we really an apostle? Are we really the greatest among us? You know. Uh, too many people think they're apostle or prophet, and they live in luxury. They've never done anything hard, uh, you know. And hard things are when you're dealing with elderly or cleaning them up, uh, children cleaning them up, uh, helping people when they get, uh, uh, you know, they get in bad situations, helping them out, raising the dead, healing the sick, opening blind eyes. Of course, God does all that, but He does it through us. And so, if we're not willing to do the least little thing, and doing the least little things, if you're not doing the least little things. You're probably not an apostle. You're probably not a prophet. You might not even be a teacher or a, or a pastor. You might think you are. It might look like you are to some people, but that doesn't mean you are. And so uh, the greatest among us are the least and children of all, excuse me, and servants of all. So it's a servant, you know, children of all, hundred humble before other people, and servants of all. The greatest among us are the least and servants of all. And that's what Jesus said. And the greatest among you will be least and servant of all. So this is a good time to share that information, and uh, it definitely blesses people. Mm -hmm. So uh, feel free to call in, anybody out there that has questions or comments, or if you have a testimony. And I know we have at least one uh, brother. Uh, um, yeah, he called me a little while ago, and uh, uh, Moxley, Richard Moxley, brother Richard Moxley. Um, yeah. I'm I'm actually better with names since I've been taking my brain vitamins, but uh, you can, maybe you can't tell it. <laughs> so anyway, the brain vitamins are good; they help everybody. And if anybody has health issues, you're welcome to call me one on one, and we'll discuss them and tell tell you how to get healed. And uh, God has 100% healing for all diseases, and it works very quickly. And I do teach in the natural as well as the supernatural. I have multiple advanced degrees; some of them are in naturopathic healing um, and uh, so it's available to the body of Christ no charge for the first consultations and if you do what I tell you then I usually I help people get completely well uh, you know totally as God leads you know if God leads somebody to donate that's fantastic if they don't then I still help them get well and that's really what we what we need to be doing in the body of Christ uh, helping each other out because the time is short this is the time if you haven't ever built up treasures in heaven by Helping those that you know can't pay you back or won't pay you back, or blessing uh, blessing even the evildoers. Uh, you know, if somebody takes your steals your coat, do you give them your shirt also? If this is the time to be doing stuff like that and store up treasures in heaven, uh, this is the time. Uh, a lot of people. I remember one brother died. He went to heaven, and, and this is a true experience. This is not a joke. It's a true experience. When God opened His book uh, for His book for His life. It was the size of a, a menu, just like, you know, you know, there's nothing in there. You know, he opened it up, and there was nothing in there. And they're like, you know, they made, he made it to heaven, which is great. And uh, Jesus said, uh, looking at this, and Jesus said to him, uh, well, maybe, maybe you'd like to go back and see if you can't get a little more in this book. <laughs> and he's like, yes, sir, I, I'd definitely do that. <laughs> so God sent him back. So it wasn't like he's a bad person. It just... He didn't do much for the kingdom of God his whole life, and he, he's getting elderly, and he died. I think he was only 50 or 60, but uh, maybe, yeah, I think he's 50, he's in his 50s. And he died of some kind of disease, uh, a neurological type disorder, and when God sent him back, he was completely cured, but he was dead for a period of time. And, uh, yeah, God opened the menu, Jesus opened the menu, God the Son, opened the opened the, the book of his, with his name on it, had his name on it on the front, he opened it up. There's nothing in there. It's good works, you know. And so God, so there is an account in heaven. People don't understand this. But Jesus said, store up treasures in heaven. So there is an account in heaven. There's real treasures in heaven. And Jesus was looking at the book, and there's nothing in there. <laughs> so all of us need to think about that. Uh, you, you, when, you, when you get up there, God opens a book. Is there going to be anything in there? Is it going to be full? Is it going to be a thick book, or is it going to be just one page or zero? 
<laughs> just throw them in the book and there's nothing in there. Hey, maybe you want to go back and try again and do some more before you get something in this book. Amen. Amen. So now the time is short. So it's good. It's good stuff. Um, okay. So is Eddie Patch, could there be a long walk on the, could there be a long walk on the Philippine beach in Sister Maria's future? No. Uh, I don't think so. You never know. The thousand years, uh, yeah, the thousand years, uh, yeah. Uh, the thousand years will be pretty nice. You get to walk on some nice beaches, I think. Yeah, and of course, heaven, I'm sure, has nice beaches too. Um, you want to comment, Sister Maria? No. Oh. <laughs> uh, I heard the Philippines is really nice, but I, I'm not, uh, I'm not traveling well, out of the country for a long time. <laughs> let me answer this. We got to call him. Greetings, brother, sister. You're on the call. This is Doctor Thrapp. Can you hear me? Yeah, good. You're live on the program. Uh, yeah, just checking in. Did you want to be alive on the program? Okay, okay. So go ahead. Uh, yeah, some people call in because we're telling them to call in. I use this number, you know, the whole time. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. So anyway, yeah. What's your name, brother? Steve, uh, Steve, S T E. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't hear. We're a little. It's a little broken sometimes. I'm on the other side of the planet. It's amazing to me. It works as good as it does. Uh, so, so welcome, Steve, to the program. You're live. What would you like to uh, talk about? Uh, okay. Yeah. We can't hear him, Doctor T. You don't hear him? Wait, 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 brother Steve. Wait, brother Steve. Uh, let, let the audience, well, sister, somebody from the chat, if you can hear brother Steve, let us know if you cannot. Uh, oh, I know what I have to do. I have to use the other computer. Yeah, it doesn't work for some reason. You think different, uh, you think different, what do you call it, browsers. You think different browsers would cooperate with each other, but they don't. Um, yeah, so. Go ahead and ask it, and then what we'll ask you after you have your question. Uh, what we'll have, what we'll do is we'll have you call back in. I'll go get my other computer, and we'll have you call back in. And uh, so ask it now, and then and then wait uh, five or ten minutes, and then call back in. Is that okay? Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. 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 So they're not hearing anything. So, yeah. okay. So basically his questions are about the timeline. So hang up, I'll go get my other computer. I'll turn them both on and one computer can hear the other computer. So that works, but uh, nothing else works for some strange reason. So uh, anyway, yeah, it, you'd think it would work by now. And many times that we tried this, you think it would work after all. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll, yeah. we'll get it. We'll get it. Uh, yeah. Okay. So call right back, brother Steve. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye. All right, sorry about that. You couldn't hear him. Uh, it's uh, yeah. I guess the audience couldn't hear him either, if I'm understanding it correctly. So I'll go get the other computer. Uh, can you dim me while I'm walking around, or too much hassle? Uh, no, I think I have a um, a screen that I can do that. Let me yeah, see. yeah. It's uh, Put you in green screen. there yeah there we are there we go thank you so much you, you can well, still hear me fine right oh yep we can hear you we just can't see you walking yeah. around the compound <laughs> yeah 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 this is just uh yeah this is just the upper part of the compound we got a lower part too but uh god is good god is good we got a lot of interesting stuff god is good but uh yeah it's not people think the philippines is a great place of vacation it's not you're gonna get robbed you might get kidnapped uh, it depends on which place you go to in the Philippines, but even the airports, there's stuff that happens right in the airports, uh, kidnapping, robberies, uh, all kinds of crazy stuff. So as soon as you get outside, it's much worse. As soon as you get outside the airport, uh, there's taxis that take you immediately to a hostage situation. It's, uh, instead of saying, <laughs> it's, instead of, you know how it says, uh, what is it, occupied, non-occupied, and the taxi, the, the vacant, and it was vacant. And, Anyway, instead of saying that, they might as well say hostage. <laughs> when, they get, when you get in, they might as well say hostage. <laughs> you know. Anyway, it's it's funny, but you got to think. You got to picture it. But uh, anyway, 
so uh, we, we uh, yeah, do so. have a question from uh, Brother Krakenfoot. <laughs> sure, that's a, a YouTube call name. He uh, uh, wrote, um, I grew up believing William Brenham was the prophet to the Laodicean age. I heard you mention his prophecy about Cali, I assume that's California. Any other insights? Well, that's a great question. Uh, that's a great question. Yeah, he was a prophet for sure. And But God doesn't just have one prophet. Just like in the Bible, if you look, there's always several prophets. There's actually a school of prophets. The Bible mentions that. And so a school, you know, you expect 100 people or 200 people at least to have a school. So that's a lot of prophets. Uh, you think about it, and that's just in one time period. That's just in uh, in Elijah and Elisha's time. They interacted with the school of the prophets. And you can read about that in, in Kings, for First Kings, Second Kings, and, and in uh, Samuel, First Samuel, Second Samuel. So God always has his prophets. So it's not just one prophet. And people sometimes get that. Confused, and I think maybe somebody in Branham got that confused also, thinking that he's the only prophet, and it's not the case, unfortunately. Uh, I mean, fortunately, actually, it's actually better for the body of Christ to get more than one view. Uh, in other words, if the prophets agree, well, then that's something pretty important. If the prophets don't agree, well, then maybe it's not so important, you know. But something important, God will make it clear, and the prophets can agree. Um, yeah, so. His question was, do we have any more insights? Well, I did give you some insights. It, it, the question, is, it, is there something more specific in there that you can see, sis, other than what I just answered? Um, no, I, I, I'm not familiar with that uh, prophet. I haven't. Yeah, William Branham, he was back in the, popular back in the 50s and 60s. And I think he died in, somewhere in the 60s in a car accident. And, uh, uh, he died quite young. Um, some people think that was because now God can prevent accidents. And I've just said how he's, you know, over over 100 times. I'd say probably it's closer to 200. He's teleported me to prevent accidents, you know, prevent problems, you know, mm -hmm. prevent getting killed. Now, or or mm -hmm. that one time he tackled the car. Actually, that's not just once. That happened where the car has been tackled or suddenly hit by an angel or by a hand of God or something. When, to the point of leaving dents in the car. This has happened to me uh, probably a hundred times also because I used to drive this one really, really, really bad road. It was 200 miles of bad road from, uh, from the Soldotna, Alaska up to Anchorage, Alaska. And I drive, drove that quite regularly as part of my work that I was doing at that time. And uh, so I'd have to drive that, you know, maybe twice a week. Uh, but, uh, and, and the road then, at those days, was very steep, and the mountain roads, so lots of mountains you had to go through. And, uh, and they're very curvy, you know, you're always curving. And there was no guardrail. If you slip off, which you could always see, I could always tell that several vehicles had slipped off. You, you're just down, you're dead. Uh, in other words, you fall maybe 100 feet or maybe even 1,000 feet, and then you hit the bottom. And, of course, the car will, you know. Welcome, Brother Richard, to the program. Can you hear me? There we go. Yes, sir, I can. Dr. Trapp, how are you doing? Okay, good. Can you hear him okay, Sister Maria? Yes, we can. Okay, you're live on the program, and it sounds like they're hearing you okay, so uh, feel free to tell us what you... And then the other brother can call in after you. There was another brother, Steve, that just called, and... Uh, I told him to call back, so he can call in just after you. But, yeah, go ahead and share whatever you like, Brother Richard. Okay. So I was talking with Dr. Trapp about this just right before the program. Um, basically, I live in middle Georgia, and on Wednesday and Thursday, I've been feeling a pulse go through the earth beneath me. It's directional. Um, the first time it happened, I thought something was a little off with me because I'm doing – one meal a day, and basically I'm I'm fasting for the other 23 hours, and I go into autophagy. And when you're doing that, it's a little rough by about one or two o'clock, and that goes on until I have food. So I was feeling this pulse at this time, and I felt it quite a bit on Wednesday and a lot on Thursday. Uh, and it's not just in the same city; it's in different areas. So the first time I was at my home. And I'm just washing dishes, and I feel this thing go through. Very strange. Never felt it before. It didn't go through me. It felt it was underneath. So I could feel a, 
basically a wave, a carrier wave, uh, going from east to west where I live the first time. Uh, and it went underneath me, and I could feel it. It was a little, little disturbing. Of what is this? It didn't hurt me, but that's what went through. And then um, it happened again the next day. And the first time I was in the house, of course, washing dishes, the next day I was out and about doing things about 60, 70 miles away. And I could feel it several times as well then, uh, mainly in the afternoon. But of course, I was, you know, the fasting portion was starting and going to autophagy. So I thought I was having something going on with my fasting. So I reached out to a master herbalist who was, uh, who's been on a faith walk since she was 12. She's in her 70s. She's been helping a lot. And I started to describe it. And as I'm describing it, she finished my sentence for me. <laughs> so it's like, really? She says, oh, yeah, I've had a lot of people call, and this is what's going on. And she says, she's not sure exactly what it is, but it's uh, something from the dark side, and they're doing something now. But thank, and thank goodness we're in Christ, and we can reach out to him directly. Yeah. So I just wanted to share, because other people might be experiencing the same. Yeah, yeah, and the, and the big uh, event is tomorrow, uh, which is the beginning of the 1,260 days. And uh, today they announced the Mark of the Beast. Uh, we we showed a. You didn't get to see it because you just came on the program. But we, if you watch, you can you can go back. Uh, in the old days, we say rewind, but whatever. Go back to the beginning and uh, and you can watch it. And it's it's a news article, so uh, uh, it's uh, yeah. Everybody's advised to get it if you want to participate in society. Is what this article says. You got to get it. And the WEF is sponsoring, and the bankers are in on it. And, Exactly like we've been prophesying for, uh, well, you know, my whole life, basically. But uh, anyway, anyway, it's it's amazing. It's we're definitely in the in the end times. Uh, I would have expected it to come out tomorrow rather than today, but uh, but anyway, yeah, today here is the twentieth, just so you know, uh, and where you are is still the nineteenth. But it's so a day and a half for you guys uh, until the uh, until the great tribulation, the one thousand two hundred sixty days. Uh, so that's exciting. So yeah, more and more of these signs. Are there other signs besides the wave, or is that the only one? Yeah, there, there was something else too. And I've, I talked a little bit with the herbalist, and she said, yeah, a lot of people are having um, <clears throat> what looks to be clots in the heart area, uh, or you know, some different pains turn on in their body. Now, if there's a, a blood clot, uh, cayenne will stabilize that very quickly just the same cayenne that people put on their their food yeah uh just one one teaspoon will take stabilize your entire uh blood flow you might system from the top of your head to the tip of your toes you might choke to death you might wish you were dead uh, <laughs> so make sure it's mixed with water make sure it's mixed with water if you swallow a whole teaspoon of cayenne but uh, your eyes will be burning and everything else so maybe drink some milk afterward or something to help them neutralize it a little bit, uh, but uh, yeah. uh, the other thing that works just as good as cayenne, a lot of people don't know about, is licorice root, and you can buy that easily everywhere, and it tastes delicious, it tastes like licorice, uh, it, uh, yeah, so you can take a spoonful of that, it'll do the same thing as cayenne, I wouldn't recommend that much, actually, of either one of those, I'd recommend a quarter spoonful uh, a day, it's, it's good, or if you have a problem, yeah, then you can take an extra big dose, but uh, uh, it is a blood thinner. It breaks up blood clots. And if you get too thin in blood, some people are hemophiliacs and they'll bleed to death. You know, with, you know, there's people bleeding out of their eyeballs. There's people bleeding out of their ears. There's people bleeding internally. Uh, so those kind of people should never have uh, cayenne or uh, or maybe a tiny bit. You know, but you got to be very careful. Anything that thins the blood, uh, it's it's dangerous for certain people. And again, depends on, you know, you, everybody knows their own constitution, really. Uh, if they're a bleeder, that's called a bleeder or a hemophiliac. Uh, if you're a bleeder, you're, you usually know it by the time you're, you know, six years old or seven years old. Uh, your parents usually notice, you know, that you're bleeding a lot now, uh, you know, so, yeah, so you, they have to be careful about blood thinners. And basically, those are natural blood thinners is what they are. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, brother. You're welcome. All right, anything else you'd like to add? No, I think that's 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 enough for right now. All right, thank you so much. We'll have the other brother Steve come call him back in in a minute. So God bless you, brother Richard. God bless you too. All right, bye -bye. All right that's our good brother Richard Moxley, who knows quite a bit about health and nutrition, and uh, and he does like to share, and that's wonderful. 
he was a guest on this program before. And I think he was. Wasn't he a guest on this program before? Yes, I'm he getting was. it mixed up. Nope. Okay. Was. Yeah. We, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And let's see. So we have Brother Steve going to call back in. He wanted to ask about the timelines on the. On the there he is. Oh, there he is. And, uh, and Dr. T, uh, Brother Frank uh, Vegas uh, wants to ask a question. So after the call, yes. we'll answer his question. Okay, very good. Very good. Uh, Brother Steve, is that you? Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for calling back. Uh, we, uh, yeah, we're, we're eager to know what your question is regarding the timeline. Yeah, so um, I'm the same guy that's uh, Steve Amen. I, I wrote the first one on the thing. Um, so I looked at your timeline. I read through um, kind of the, the stuff that you wrote along with it. And I guess I just have... Um, some clarification questions and then just like, you know, which things are your real for sure prophecies and which things are your kind of educated guesses? Yeah, sure. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Yeah. So the first one is, um, when do you think the, the trumpets will start? Like of those seven trumpets, because we got the, the seal, the trumpets. Yeah. And then the, the well, I believe, and I could be wrong, but I believe the trumpets start after the seals and the seals, the great last one is a great earthquake. Yeah, I think we're going to know when that one hits. <laughs> so it might be one of the meteors hitting. Uh, the whole earth is probably going to shake. Uh, a great earthquake. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, two or three earthquakes in the, the seals, the trumpets and the, uh, bowls of wrath or vials of wrath uh, yeah. yeah and so there might be three altogether and uh, I think all three of those are going to be literally earth shaking the whole earth uh, in other words it's, everybody's going to know it and uh, yeah you might lose communication or whatever but everybody will know it's huge and the fact that you can't you not get in, can't communication anywhere uh, now that's yeah. that's the one reason to do what brother uh, brother Christopher advises on the two witnesses which is uh to get your radios working and uh in other words there's there's citizen band cb and then there's the the ones that bounce all over the earth uh that's the ones he uses i'm trying to remember what those are called uh do you do you remember brother uh, steve what those are called or sister maria no i don't i actually have not watched the two witnesses yet oh um, well check it out when you could, get could you guys put a link in the uh comments to their because i did try looking them up on youtube and that, uh, like, if you type uh, in two witnesses, multiple different types of things come up. Yeah. And it didn't, it none no. of them seem to be the right No, one. no, it's a YouTube channel name. It's called Two Witnesses Live or The Two Witnesses Live. Is it The Two Witnesses Live? Four words? Yeah, away? yeah. It's uh, The Two Witnesses Live. If you type and they spell them, out the word. And, and they spell, uh, go ahead. <laughs> they spell out the word two, T W O, The Two Witnesses Live. And go ahead, Sister Maria, go ahead. Oh, and if you put channel at the end of that, so the two witnesses live channel, it should pop up. Okay. Yeah, if it doesn't, if it doesn't, let us know. And uh, uh, she can put it in chat if, yeah. But they're pretty easy to find. Yeah, and I, yeah I'm surprised you can find them. It's the only channel called that. Uh, there are other people out there claiming to be the two witnesses. Uh, one one guy... To be, now, they're not claiming to be the two in it, so it's clear. Uh, you know, the, the sister, excuse me, brother Christopher and brother Watchful is what he goes by, which his real name is Greg, Gregory, but Gregory means Watchful, and he thinks it's better to promote the meaning of his name, which is, I think, is a good idea, too. Uh, my name, me, Timothy, means give honor to God, or honor God, if you want to make it real short, and I think that's fantastic. Yeah. And now, when you leave off the the at the end, just have Tim or Timo or Timmy, you're 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 really uh, leaving out God. You really shouldn't do that. Uh, uh, it means honor God. If you just say Tim, that means your honor, and and I don't like to be called that. Uh, it's you know it's that's what you call a judge or something. You know, uh, but now if 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 you're married and your name is Timothy, it's fine for your wife to refer to you that as Tim because uh, Abraham's wife referred to him as Lord. The Bible says that she did. So. <laughs> So, uh, you know, so it shows respect, which is good. You know, it's, it, respect is good. And he should respect her, too. Yeah. You know, and uh, hopefully everybody everybody serves and respects each other and everything works out good. Uh, yeah. So anyway, yeah, so that's, that, that's all. Yeah. Go right ahead, Sister Maria. Um, for, oh, for a shortcut, uh, Brother That'll Steve. Be, oh. And then we've got the seven seals coming after that. Um, yeah, that's my opinion is the seal, the, the seals are, excuse me, the seven 
seals are first, and then and the last seal is of the seal. The sixth seal is is it's not the last; it's the seventh seal. But anyway, the seventh seal I'm pretty sure is the seven trumpets. In other words, uh, and the seventh trumpet is the seven bowls of wrath. So it's you know different people discuss differently about the last one. So it's a very good question. So my my opinion, I could be wrong on this. I'm not saying I know everything. But my opinion is that uh, the six seals, see the seals are first, and the, part of the seal are the horsemen of the apocalypse, which is where we are now. The horsemen of the apocalypse are riding, and the fourth seal is about to be opened. Uh, and uh, then we're coming into the fifth seal, and then the sixth seal. The sixth seal is the great earthquake. The fifth seal, uh, I'd have to look up what that, I think it's, I think it's all the people being executed for the, uh, for standing up for being, for being Christian. So I'd have to look up for sure, uh, to tell you for sure, but, uh, uh, it, yeah, it's, it's the martyrs. Yeah, yeah, the martyrs. In the other martyrs words, the yeah, that 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 might be you or me if we don't learn to call down fire real quick. <laughs> so, yeah. so, but God is good, and uh, He can take care of us through it all. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I I often pray, Lord, if you don't have anybody that wants to be the two witnesses, I'll I'll do it. I'll do it. You just tell me, and uh, I think it's a good prayer. You know, I don't mind dying at the end. We're only going to be dead three and a half days. I'd like to be dead longer. I might have a good vacation in heaven, but uh, <laughs> three days, whatever. Yeah, I'd like to be dead longer. We might have a good vacation in heaven, but uh, anyway, I'll do it. I, I, I tell him that all the time. You don't have somebody else to do it? I'll, I'll do it. And of course, I'm sure I'm not top on his list, but uh, you know, a lot of times he calls people and they, they don't want to do it and they run the other way. And, and sometimes he he gets them back, and sometimes they, they don't. You don't get them back, you know. So sometimes they die prematurely too, for 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 being too far out of the will of God. Let's say it that way. Um, we don't want to be out of the will of God. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, you get in trouble. So another question I have, Doctor Timothy, is on your timeline. You've got this Earth burns with fire for forty days and forty nights, and I guess I'm wondering how did you come up with that? Now, the Lord told me that in a vision in the year two thousand. Okay. That there, that okay. the, the seven, the wrath. We're not appointed unto wrath. He made that clear. Uh, at the time, I wasn't positive about the pre-trib rapture. I was thinking, you know, we're out of here at the beginning. That's what I was uh, thinking. I was hoping. I was saying that way. I wasn't sure, but uh, I should have asked him. And of course, when you're standing before the Lord, your brain doesn't function very good. You're well. I didn't have a brain. I was in my spirit body. So you know, I don't know. I guess we got a spirit, spirit brain maybe. But anyway, anyway, it's, we were talking about that before the program. Some people have literally died, and they and they and they function nor, almost normally their whole life, and they examine them and find out they never had a brain. This is actually documented more than once. Uh, this has actually been documented. So uh, anyway, but anyway, so the what he told me is when the wrath comes, it's 40 days of the one of the one of the bowls. You can look it up. One of them's fire from the sun. The sun burns or whatever. Uh, or yeah. or you know, anyway, you have to read it. But one of them is the is fire and. Uh, Fire from heaven, or something like that, and and that is forty days and forty nights. That is the, but the others happen like simultaneously. In other words, the whole earth doesn't burn instantly. It takes it takes a little time. Uh, I believe yeah. later. Now again, the, this part is speculation. The, the this is what I'm going to add here is I do believe this is, uh, or an educated guess. I do believe the dark side has. Well, I've been told by the highest levels, some of the people in the highest levels. I still have. A lot of contacts in government in the dark side let's say it that way and they tell me uh they have a weapon they can fire into the sun and create a cme and by the angle they fire that into the sun and the, the tra- trajectories they calculate all that and they can make it hit the earth every time and they can do this again every 30 minutes or maybe every hour or maybe there were 15 minutes he told me and it was surprisingly how many times they could do that and if you keep doing that for 40 days and 40 nights the sun is going to get, the earth is going to get very, very hot. And that equivalent to what Jesus told me, that the earth would get up to so many thousand degrees. And I was, at the time he told me that, it was somewhere between 11 and 15,000. He told me the exact number, and I forget. And But I was thinking to myself when he said that, wow, that's hotter than the surface of the sun. Well, it just so happens that corona mass ejections can be hotter than the surface of the sun because, uh, you know, they're a little deeper into the sun where they come from. So, um, yeah, so that's. That's coming. That's coming. It's going to be toast. It's going to take several months after that for the earth to cool down. But that is the very end on the earth. And then the the people doing this are up in space. They have they have six cities they've already built. They're working on the seventh one now. They're probably going to build ten huge cities in space. 
and they're going to be doing it from up there. And what it is is that different there's different groups. The, the Bible says that that last government, the feet of clay, iron and clay mixed together, they don't mix very well. So there's different mm -hmm. groups up there. So like you know the Chinese might have one one uh, these big cities and. And Americans might have another big city, and you know, and uh, Russians might have another big city, and you know, at some point they'll think, well, the Americans are mostly bankers. We want to get rid of them. We'll just push this button here because they're all building them together. They probably put nuclear bombs in each other's cities, uh, and so uh, all they have to do is push this button here, and all everybody's gone. And uh, but they're all going to be pushing the buttons about the same time. So Jesus won't have a whole lot of butt kicking to do when he comes back. It's uh, <laughs> it's going to all take care of each other, uh, mm -hmm. and that'll be the end of. So yeah, there'll be there'll be a lot of them that basically judge themselves, and that's basically you give the dark side enough rope and they hang themselves, and that's exactly what's mm -hmm. going on. Yeah. Yeah. So in, in thanks for that explanation. That kind of helps me to understand that, that in Revelation 19, there's a, there's a war where Jesus comes back riding on his white horse with the armies from heaven. And then he comes back to make, like, the, the people it looks like he's fighting against are the Antichrist, the false prophet, and their army. Yes. And I guess I'm wondering, when do you think that that war happens? I believe that happens before. Uh, in other words, late 2028. Uh, we're raptured in late 2027, and there, there's a year of wrath. And so somewhere during that year of wrath, he comes back and kicks butt seriously on this planet. Now, exactly why, it might be simply... See, the Valley of Megiddo is, is just outside Jerusalem. It's not that far. And so it might, this is going to take place in the Valley of Megiddo. He might be doing that simply to win the hearts of the Jewish people because he loves the Jewish people. And uh, well, he loves everybody, but, he, you know, he has a special position there. And therefore, when they put faith in him, he can rapture them out of here. And so there may be two raptures. There may be, a, um, and it does it says there's two reapings. If you read, it doesn't say the word two, but if you read carefully, uh, Revelation chapter 14, uh, verses uh, uh, 15 through 20, uh, through the end there of that chapter, it does describe two reapings. And so it could be that there are two raptures. Uh, it, or it could be that, you know, God just miraculously preserves them through the 40 days and 40 nights of fire somehow. You know, God God can do these things. Uh, just like he miraculously preserved the uh, the children, you know, the, the three Hebrew, some people say children, they're probably teenagers, uh, probably 18 or 19 yeah. or something. Uh, the three, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were thrown in a, in a furnace that was heated up seven times hotter than factory specifications. And, uh, and it was so hot that uh, the people who threw them in died. Uh, they died. It says they did. And, uh, you know, so God miraculously, they didn't even smell like smoke when they come out of there. So that could be pictorial. It's pictorial. Uh, we have to go through this tribulation period, which is the great tribulation, which is a 10-year period, and it gets more and more intense each year, and we're about to enter the Great Tribulation. That's pictorial of us making it through, right through all that with God's help. But it also could be especially pictorial of somebody, some small group, making it through the 40 days and 40 nights of fire uh, from the sky. Um, it could be that God's going to actually yeah. preserve some group or multiple groups, and that one of those groups might be Israel, might be. Uh, you know, again, God can do these things. I don't know how he does them, but he does them, and uh, it's pretty amazing every time I see it. It just... Yeah, it sends chills up and down my spine and my skin and everything else. Just thinking about it. it's the Holy Spirit. You know, it's uh, when you feel that. Usually, it's the Holy Spirit. It's God is so amazing uh, that He can do these things. And uh, yeah, it's it's just yeah, just awesome. So we're going to see a lot of great rescues. And matter of fact, one of the scriptures that it's Revelation chapter three. Uh, I don't know. I think it's verse ten. Yeah, it's verse ten. Uh, it says that. Uh, it says that. Um, uh, a lot of pre-trib rapture you, you, people use this. It says uh, translated something like, uh, you know, take them out. Of, you know, we'll be taken out before it's, uh, we'll be kept. That's it. We'll be kept in the in the day of judgment, in the day of wrath, in the day whatever. And uh, and and it's, it's basically uh, that word kept is the same word that Jesus prayed. Uh, I pray that, uh, that you know he's praying for his followers, his apostles, and all his followers. And he's praying yeah. that. You don't you don't take them out. He said, "I don't pray. I don't pray you take them out of the world. I pray that you take keep them through this world. That word, through this through this tribulation, through this trial. See, he knew when he died, he was praying that just before he died. He knew that there would be intense persecution, and there was. They were they were all hiding in that upper room. That's why it says the door was locked when Jesus came through. They were they were meeting in secret. They were afraid, and uh, and he came 
and and told them, hey, you know, that's uh, that's really me. I really was raised from the dead. And all of a sudden, they were courageous because they knew they would be raised from the dead too. But before that, they weren't sure. You know, they were. So anyway, he kept them through that hour of trial, and he. And so their hour of, tri hour of trial was roughly 10 days. It could have been a little less from the time he was executed on the cross. But definitely three days and three nights. They were definitely all afraid um, before he made a first appearance. But roughly 10 days, uh, eight days, whatever, they were, they were afraid. It was their hour of trial for them, too. And, and they, Jesus foretold that when he said, Satan has asked for you men. He's talking to his 12 apostles, maybe a few others. He said, Satan has asked for you men to be tested as we, and it has been granted unto him, has been granted unto Satan, to test you men as we, in other words, sift you men as we, if you want to say it that way. So he was telling them about this 10-day trial, or 8-day trial, whatever it was. People want to argue about how many days it was, 3-day trial, whatever. He was telling them about this trial that they would have to go through also. And so how much more do we go through? In other words, we're not better than the apostles that we're going to miss out on. In, ter in persecution, you know, we're, we're gonna we're gonna get some challenges. It's gonna be a bumpy ride the next three and a half years, and uh, I'm not sugarcoating it. We have uh, we have a dear sister. We might play her video that uh, she's a pre-trib rapture girl and just a heart of gold. Just a very sweet. Her channel is called uh, Crystal Love for Jesus or something to that effect. Crystal loves Jesus or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we're gonna play because God gave her a dream to wake her up. And you can tell at the beginning of that dream that she's really, her whole paradigm is like, I, is God trying to tell me where, where, see, you can tell what she's thinking. Is God trying to tell me we're, we're going to have to go through the great tribulation, you know, and because she, she doesn't even know we've been in the tribulation for almost seven years now, six, six and a half years, let's say it that way. Uh, yeah, so anyway, it's, it's, it's hilarious. If we get to play it, I mean, I'm not laughing at her, but we can all pray for her and that God continues to give her dreams or send an angel or whatever to wake her up uh, so she can wake up all of her followers too. So God is trying to wake her up in this day and age. And I think that's a great miracle and that's a great testimony also about where we are in the timeline. He's trying to wake up all these pre-tribbers. And I think a lot of them will wake up when they realize we're in the great trip. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute, maybe maybe the post-tribbers are right. Uh, but see what they do is they get confused with the year of wrath, confused with the great tribulation. And I was, I was yeah. confused on that for a while, you know, and uh, so it's easy to do, but it's not the same thing. It says you're not appointed under wrath, but you will have tribulation 10 days. So, you know, it's a day for a year. So, and even the year of wrath is often called day of wrath. So that right there tells you it's a day for a year, a day for a year, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah so it's, it's very clear that tribulation is 10 years long, and it starts at the only day given to us in the whole Bible. So it's Alcom's Razor. The simplest answer is probably the right one. And Alcum was a man of God. William of Alcum uh, is, was a man of God. You've heard of Alcum's razor before, brother? Um, yeah, you've, I, I've heard it in the past, and then you've taught on it a few times and yeah. clarified it. And... Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, he's a man of God from like the 12, I think he was born in 1275 and died in 1350 or somewhere in there. Uh, yeah, he's, he's a man of God that developed that. We still use that in science today. I'm a scientist, engineer, and uh, we still use that in figuring things out and, you know, in science. The simplest answer is probably the best one. It's probably the right one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So God yeah. didn't make it complicated. It's so, it's so simple. The 10 days is so simple, and you will have tribulation 10 days. It's so simple, everybody misses it. They think, oh, no, can't be that simple. <laughs> but it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, I, the way that you've explained it, I mean, in the past, I've always thought it was seven years and seven years, and uh, and I didn't realize that that ten days was ten, you know, ten years. But yep. now, you know, you've explained it. I mean, it all fits together. Yep. Um, I've, I've, I've seen it. I did have a, another question regarding um, at kind of toward the end of your timeline, you have the New Jerusalem descending from heaven um, around September of 2029, and I, I guess. Um, my my previous understanding and maybe even my current understanding is that the new heaven doesn't descend i mean the new jerusalem doesn't descend from heaven until the end of the after the end of the millennial reign um and then because uh, it seems like that's the order of what happens in revelation 20 and 21 um uh, but you have it like the the you have the new jerusalem coming down from heaven and, yeah um, and then I, kind of dovetailing with that was I, I started to look at Ezekiel and in Ezekiel like 40 and onwards it's got kind of it, 
Ezekiel 49 seems to be talking about what's going to happen in the uh, millennial uh, kingdom. Okay. And it, it has a multiple, like several chapters describing what the um, what the new temple will look like um, in Jerusalem. And okay. I guess it was was that last piece about the, the new Jerusalem descending? Is that is that also revelation, or is that just is that your um, educated guess? Or yeah, yeah, he didn't tell me exactly when. Well, he did tell me that uh, the the uh, that God will rule. You know, that, that he will rule. He will be with us here on this earth. Uh, for it, it didn't say this earth. I'm not positive it's this earth, but he said the new earth. Uh, and so that you hear the new earth, you're, you're wondering if it's renewed earth or a different planet. But uh, I think it's I think it's this earth. And uh, I could be wrong. I'm open either way. Whatever God wants to do, fine with me. But uh, yeah, so the 12th year, 12 means God's perfect government. And, um, and just like 11... Is the year of wrath? It means chaos, destruction. Eleven means chaos, destruction, uh, judgment, uh, and then go back to the tenth year. Ten means complete test. Uh, complete. Uh, it also means perfection. So the complete test. So we finish that at the, ten, at the end of the tenth year, and we get the new bodies, or at the beginning of the tenth year. Anyway, the, the first. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. 2027, uh, from 2017, yeah. Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah. Uh, yeah. So we, that's when we get the new bodies to pass the test, and then immediately start the year of judgment which is 11th year, and then immediately starts the year of, of God's rule, uh, which is, uh, you know, the thousand years, uh, you know, what balance of the thousand years, whatever. You know, it's, it, there's still a little question in my mind exactly when the 1,000 years, the 6,000 years ends and the 1,000 years starts. But I am very convinced uh, from what he's told me and, and what I've seen in Scripture about the rapture and the one year of wrath that were not appointed unto wrath, um, uh, yeah. and so on. But the, the 12th year, it's a good question. I will read, uh, I'll take your your suggestion and read Revelation real good, again, 20 and 21. Uh, but I had understood, you know, and again, I could be wrong. So it's not, that's not a prophecy, I say of the Lord. That is, but what we can all agree that if it is this plan, whatever planet it is, that God's in charge at that point. I think we can all agree on that. He is ruling. Can we agree on that? What do you think? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. so... Jesus will be ruling and reigning on the earth. Yeah, that's right, that's right. So, so whether, you see the, whether you see the New Jerusalem as a, as a glorious heavenly city descending or not, either way, his government's here. So the 12th year represents his government, his perfect government coming to the earth or coming to wherever we are, the new earth, either this earth or the new earth. And, uh, and so, he, yeah, we can agree that his government's coming. And, and if, if it hasn't manifested as the New Jerusalem, it's going to be manifested some other way, and and I think we can agree on that too. Um, the, the New Jerusalem, this big city that's twelve thousand miles by twelve thousand miles by twelve thousand miles, uh, if that's literal, that's huge. Uh, in other words, that, that would cover a whole continent, you know, like a whole United States or something. Uh, so a lot of people think, well, maybe it's not literal, you know, and, and maybe it's not, you know. So we'll find out. We'll find out, uh, uh, you know, what that means exactly in a, just a few years. It won't take very long find out so we can ask him in three and a half years you can ask the lord jesus himself and we can get more information about that but uh it is we can all agree yeah. god's government does start uh, actually at the rapture sort of because he's cleaning house uh in other words he's, he's gathering up his own unto himself and he's letting the you know he's letting all the the worst uh, the judgments go and uh and he's cleaning house he's uh you know it's, it takes him one year to get rid of the Roughly one year to get rid of the bad guys, which you see that with different mm -hmm. presidencies, you know, or different kings or whatever. It might take them a year, two years, three years, four years to get to get rid of the old regime and get the new one put in. And of course, the, the new one's usually just as corrupt as the old one within a few years, I had most yeah. in most places in human. But this time we got Jesus coming, and he's going to rule for six thousand. Excuse me, he's going to rule for one thousand years of peace and prosperity uh, on the earth. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be huge. That's that's awesome. And yeah, so I don't know for sure about the 12th, uh, but I do know it's God's, sim if it's not literally uh, New Jerusalem coming down, then it's a sim symbolically uh, a New Jerusalem coming down. In other words, he, the king and his, and his uh, the people he appoints, you know, you be king over this city, you be king over that city, you know, you be judge over this city, you know, et cetera. Uh, you know, whoever he appoints uh, will be ruling. So his kingdom is coming down, let's say it that way. His kingdom 
coming yeah. down big time. And it starts at the rapture, literally. At the, re the resurrection of the dead and then the rapture. So it starts at the resurrection of the dead. That's when his kingdom comes, literally, uh, to this earth. And now it's already here. It's in our hearts. And he's in our hearts. And his kingdom's in our hearts. And uh, and that's why Christians have no voting, no business voting for Trump or, or Biden or any of the others. Uh, because uh, we should always vote for Jesus. Uh, his kingdom is... An everlasting kingdom, and it's always righteous and and holy, and and it's what everybody needs to end all suffering and so on. So he's got a plan, and it's going to yeah. come. Yeah. So does that answer most of your questions? Um, it it kind of does. It's uh, you know, I guess it's just a it's it's one of those technical questions where, uh, you know, I know his kingdom is coming. As I understand it, his, uh, the, the better description of the millennial kingdom and the, the, the temple is the one that's in Ezekiel 40 and onwards. And then the one in uh, the temple that comes down in Revelation 21, to me, is the one that comes down after the millennial kingdom. Satan is then finally destroyed at the end. The earth is destroyed again by fire. And then there's a new heaven and a new earth that's created. And that's when the, the new Jerusalem comes down, the golden Jerusalem. That's a huge... That just it seems to be my understanding of yeah. Because when I if I read it pretty literally, it just seems to flow in, in that sense. Yeah, feel free to send me an email with your key verses, uh, and I'll read yeah. I'll read the whole chapter forty. I'll read the whole chapter twenty and uh, Revelation twenty. So Ezekiel forty, Revelation twenty, Revelation twenty one. Uh, I think yeah. there's Revelation twenty two related to this also. Uh, I have to look it up yeah. and see, but I think it is. And I'll read them all real carefully. But any key verses. And key points, maybe put in an email, send it to me. If it looks good, I might let you teach it. We might even change our timeline, but it's a lot of work to get things changed. <laughs> it might be easier just to yeah. postpone it until until uh, after until we get raptured, <laughs> and then we'll change it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, all right, brother. Can I ask you one last question? Sure. Before I let you go? Sure. So I was just talking to a, a, another Christian brother today, who you know he's. He's been in the deliverance ministry. Uh, he is an older Christian brother. He's probably in his 60s or so. And I, I asked him, you know, uh, when do you think Jesus is coming back? And he, he gave me the nobody knows the day or the hour. It could be a long time from now. It could be a short time from now. Nobody knows. And why do you think there are so many Christians that are still unaware of the, the time and the season that we're living in? It's, it's definitely a mass deception. You want to answer that, Sister Maria? Oh, yeah, he's <laughs> well. That you he, just said uh, it in those few words, right? Mass deception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a deception from the devil himself. He accidentally got cut off. I didn't cut him off, but it could be you know the connection. So he might call back directly. Uh, but um, yeah, and so just so the listeners know, yeah, there are a lot of Christians that have this deception, and I think God Himself allows it because He wants people to be tested. In other words, some of the yeah, there is. Okay, is that you, brother? Is it brother Steve? Steve, Steve. Yeah. What was your yeah, first name again? Steve. Yeah. Okay. So my, my my last question that I just wanted to run by you was, so I spoke to an older Christian brother today. He's he's actually a pastor of a church. He's been in the deliverance ministry. He believes in like the healing and speaking in tongues and um, gifts of prophecy. But when I asked him about when he thinks Jesus is coming back. He, he gave me the the kind of the nobody knows the day or the hour. Right. Like we can't we can't know how you know the people who claim they know are false, and people who you know because there's no no way that we, we should be able to know. It's very we simple. Yeah, yeah. This is a mass deception. Your question is why so many people feel like that. This is a mass deception that God Himself has allowed in the body of Christ. He didn't cause it, but he allows it. And uh, and it says he'll send them a strong delusion, you know, that they believe the lie. Well, it's multiple lies all packaged up so nice and neat. And that's so nice and neat and in the church and they sound good and all that. But if you read that carefully, every time he said no one knows the day or hour, and he said it a lot, he always said no. He never said, never said no one will know the day or the hour. As a matter of fact, he, said, he appeared to John 60 years later in the Isle of Patmos on the Isle of Patmos, and he said, you will know if you watch. He said, watch, so you will know. And if you don't watch, you won't know. And Thessalonians says the same thing. Uh, so uh, when you, when I, if I'm visiting you, and I, and you ask, and we have a great visit, and I'm leaving, and you say, when are you coming back? And I say, well, I don't know, only God knows. 
Does that mean I'll never know? Does that mean you'll never know? Of course you'll know. Of course I'll know sometime when I'm coming back. And of course I'll tell you. If people like to say, oh, Jesus don't even know. Jesus don't even know when he's coming back. That's such baloney. That is such baloney. If, you know, just because I said that I don't know at the day I left, you know, and this is the day before he left, he said that. He don't know. You know, if I, the day I left, I said, I don't know. Or the day before I left, I said, I don't know when I'm coming back. Only God knows. Doesn't mean I'll never know. <laughs> you know what I mean? It doesn't mean no one, yeah. It doesn't, in the, it's not in the future tense. It's always in the present tense. You can read them all. You can find one in the future tense, send it to me. I'm happy to look at it. But uh, they're all in the present tense that, that you do not know. Or you and, and the present tense was 2,000 years ago. That's past tense for us. And again, he clarified that in Thessalonians and in Revelation and in several other places. Uh, the end of the book of Daniel. It says in the last days, people will know. People will understand this. People will understand the timing. And he's talking about the timing of everything. Uh, it says that in the last one or two verses of Daniel, chapter 12, or the last you know, last part of Daniel. Uh, it's And there's also the verse in uh, one of the minor prophets. I think it's, I don't know, ne ne uh, Amon, Am Amos maybe? I don't know. Anyway, one of them says uh, God won't do a single thing unless he lets his servants know about it first. The servants of prophets know about it first. Yeah, so, I mean, does God change his mind and change his personality? The Bible says he doesn't change. And so, obviously, these people that go around saying, no man knows the day or the hour, they haven't studied the word correctly um, yet. Uh, you know, in other words, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, they, so, they need to, and it does take some pressing in. Sister Maria wants to add something. Go ahead. Yeah, Sister yeah. I, I'd like to read that scripture. It's Revelation 3.3. 3. It says, remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. So he's clearly saying that if we watch, we will know. He won't come upon us as a thief. Yeah. He says if you don't watch, you won't know. And some translations actually say watch, therefore. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously, yeah. if we're supposed to watch, there's going to be some benefit to watching. And people think, well, why should I watch? Well, it's because if you don't watch, you won't know. So if you do watch, you will know. It's, it's not that complicated. I don't know yeah. where, where people are getting all this stuff from that they keep coming up with. But uh, most of them are stuck on that one verse. Mm -hmm. Well, there's multiple verses where Jesus said, uh, you do not know the hour of my return. Or I he even said, I don't know. My, in other words, himself. Jesus himself didn't know at that time. But again, it's just like if I'm visiting you and I'm leaving. You say, when are you coming back? And I say, I don't know. Only God knows. That doesn't mean I'll never know. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's, anyway, people are trying to. It's, it, this is third grade English, by the way. People don't understand tense. It's called tense. Past tense, present tense, future tense. Uh, it's third grade English. They all need to go back to third grade. Mm -hmm. All of them. <laughs> and learn, learn what tense means, okay? But just because you don't know something one day doesn't mean you won't know it the next day. As a matter of fact, it's called learning. We're all supposed to learn as we go through life. So you should know something the next day that you didn't know the previous day. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, you'll wind up with an empty head pretty soon or empty, you know, because you forget things, you know. So we all need to keep learning and growing. So anyway, it's, it's third grade English. They all forgot their third grade English is what happened. Every single one of them. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, we love them. Pray for them. Amen. Very good question. Very good question. And, yeah. uh, and those, are, so those are some uh, some information you can share with them. And obviously the scripture that says God won't do a single thing unless he lets his, his prophets know about it, his, his servants' prophets know about it first. Uh, well, yeah. that's pretty clear. Uh, a single thing? I mean, how much more? The biggest thing ever. You know what I mean? The biggest thing ever is Jesus' yeah. return. You know, it's for, at least in our time, it's the biggest thing ever. Uh, yeah, so, and that's why the prophets are real. And if you can check, you can also check my prophecies for the last uh, 14, 15, well, 25 years, actually, on uh, on archives and uh, different places on YouTube. And you'll see every single prophecy. Anything I said, thus saith the Lord, came to pass. And the predictions, about 90%, 80, 90%. Um, yeah, 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 so, yeah. It's it's all coming to pass. So there are real prophets that do have prophecies and words from the Lord, and so on. Yeah. Can, can, yeah. can I give uh, Brother Steve a, a definition? Um, Brother Steve, I want to give you a definition of the word watch, and um, it is um, Gregorio in uh, the Greek, and it means to watch, to be vigilant, to give strict attention to to be actively cautious. So so he's telling us to 
Pay strict attention and watch. Yeah, vigilant. Be vigilant Be about vigilant. it. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and pay atta strict attention. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Very good. Thank you for that definition. And thank you, Brother uh, Steve, for your calls and your great questions. We appreciate that. And uh, if you'd like to teach sometime, just let us know. Uh, we'll, might, we might have you on as a guest. Uh, you know, just let us know. We'll, we'll talk about it on email. All right. You take care. Sounds good. God thank bless you. So much. All right. Take bye -bye. care. Blessings. Blessings. All right. That's our dear brother, Steve, uh, from, uh, we should have asked him what state he's from. I didn't ask him, so I don't know on that one. But uh, anyway, awesome. excellent. Brother, I don't remember talking to him before. It might be the first time I've talked with him. But he has a good heart, and he loves the Lord, and he studies things, so that's good. Now, you get a lot of people call in that never even looked at the countdown page. have no idea. And their main question is, when's the free trip rapture? <laughs> uh, anyway, we love him. <laughs> uh, brother uh, Christopher said last, last night, I was on their program, he said, Pre, regarding pre-trib rapture, don't be asking questions like that. He said, that ship has already sailed. <laughs> it <laughs> yeah. is. That, it was, that's true, hon. <laughs> seven years ago. You're going to go, need to go back in time about seven years. You're going to catch that ship. Uh, there was no pre-trib rapture. You're going to be looking hard for it because there was not. I mean, if there was, it was one or two people that I don't know. You know let's say it that way. <laughs> you know, so it was, uh, you know, Enoch did get raptured, and so did uh, so did. Uh, um, Jesus, resurrected body, he was raptured, everybody saw that one, and Elijah too, so there were three, you have to go back in time far enough, maybe you can hang onto their foot or something and make it that way, you know, so there's some, there's three pre, three pre-trib raptures where you, uh, you got to go back in time to catch them, you know, so, but otherwise that ship has already sailed, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty funny, yeah, I, li I like that, Christopher, yeah, I like that, and brother, they're good, both of them, brother Christopher and brother Watchful, they're both Excellent, excellent people. Um, so, all right. Uh, Frank uh, has uh, had a question way back when. Um, he says, um, "Is the 2020 lockdown mentioned in the Book of Revelation?" Very good question, brother. Awesome question. I'm glad you re-asked because you sent that email, and I think I asked you to ask it on the program. Uh, yeah, if you listen to brother. Um, the guest they had on about four days ago on uh, the Two Witnesses Live, he explains all the horsemen as the lockdowns and the uh, the thing you're not supposed to say are on YouTube channels, basically. Uh, but everything that happened around that time, uh, he explained all four horsemen of the apocalypse and, and death and hell following those two. Uh, also, you can say all six uh, if you want. All, all four with death and hell included, you know, that doesn't say death and hell are horsemen, but they could be the way it rewards it, you know, it says they're following. So, uh, you know, it's, it's obviously symbolic. Uh, everybody knows it's symbolic or pretty much everybody, but yeah, he describes every single one of them, uh, as, um, as, uh, as that event. And I'd say, go back and look, um, um, if you can watch those, but basically yeah, all the horsemen like the, um, let's say the sword the great sword he says it wasn't great in the size he says it was great in that there was many and uh and he said that's one of the meanings of great and he went went to the greek on it excuse me i got a hiccup a little bit there sorry about that all i did was drank my vitamins with water you know so i don't know why i got hiccups but i guess maybe vitamins give you hiccups sometimes but anyway uh yeah so uh the great the great sword represents many and the word for sword was a small a small, uh, like a fishing knife. It's a small, like a pocket, what you call a pocket knife nowadays. Uh, and so he said that that's what they were poking people with, you know. <laughs> I won't I won't say the word, but every, maybe if you if you look at my thumb and finger here, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, so uh, maybe we can say syringe. Yeah, but anyway, so he says that's exactly what it was. So I, I think the Bible's written where it could have every single description could have multiple meanings. Uh, and I think he's right as one of the meanings. Uh, in other words, uh, yeah. So do watch that if you can. Uh, if you can't find it, let us know. But it is the two witnesses live, and I've been a guest on their program. But I was not a guest on this one. This was maybe uh, maybe three or four days ago, and the brother was going. I don't remember the brother's name. If I did, I'd tell you. Uh, but um, he was going through. There were two brothers that were guests, and they were friends of each other like from the same congregation, the same house church, home church, probably. 
Uh, and then uh, the one brother, he seemed a bit forgetful at first, but then when he came on, all of a sudden he's fluent, like a powerful anointing of the Lord when he started speaking. So I could tell from that anointing that he, what everything he said was important, and I, I stayed glued to it for the rest of the, an hour and a half went by like that. And uh, yeah, and it's, that's a really good explanation of the four horsemen and how it related to 2020 mm -hmm. and everything that went on then and 2021 too. It, it related to all that. So it is definitely the first part of the tribulation period, without a doubt. Uh, again, if you can't if you can't watch if you can't find that, let us know and we'll try to find it. But I'd say if you just look at their go to their Two Witnesses Live channel on YouTube and look at their last five that they posted, and you'll find two guys. I don't remember their names, uh, but you can also call in live on their program. Or, well, no, they don't do call-ins. Uh, but uh, anyway, if you can't find it, send us an email. I'll try to find it for you. Uh, but it's it's a very good explanation of of um, of the how it, how it definitely relates to the tw what happened in 2020 and 2021, and the, how it relates to the five the four horsemen of the apocalypse, which again death and hell, uh, yeah, they're mm -hmm. they're not said mm -hmm. to be horsemen, but a lot of people do include them, and then you got six horsemen. Some people come up with five, and they say death and hell are the same one, you know, which whatever you know. Uh, you know, but anyway, it's, it, it doesn't matter how you want to look at it. It's it's four, and then there's death and hell. And, but those four definitely all relate to what went on in that way, in that fulfillment. Again, things have multiple way God writes things and says things and explains things. They'll have multiple fulfillments, uh, not just one fulfillment, multiple fulfillments. In other words, multiple meanings in the way He describes uh, those those four horsemen. Of the apocalypse so hopefully that answers your question and uh again if you cannot find that video uh send an email and i'll try to find it for you or dr j uh, or one of us will try to find it for when, you uh one of our sisters here um christine said it was jeff and joel so uh i believe it was from tuesday of this week so if you go over to the two witnesses live and um the, their first names were Jeff and Joel. You'll you'll find it. It it actually was ex, it was excellent. It was an excellent. Uh, uh, yeah. Those two are. Yeah. Are very... Yeah. That brother, the older one. Uh, I don't know if it was the Jeff or Joe, but Joel. But he's the older of the two, and he had, uh, like I say, he seemed a little forgetful at first, but then when he got when he got started, that anointing came on him without a doubt, and he. He explained it. He had anointing to teach and explain mm -hmm. at least that part of it. Probably a lot of things, you know, but I don't know the brother. But I can tell a powerful anointing came on him right on the program. You can see it, too, if you look for it. Uh, yeah, you can you can see it, too. And then this one that we're, let's play that if we have time, that sister. This is the first half. You'll see that a powerful anointing was still on her when she woke up. And she, God is trying to explain to her that there is no free trip rapture and yeah. that she needs to get ready and she needs to get to the mountains and take her family and take her food and whatever. Uh, God is trying to open up her because he, she loves Jesus and Jesus loves her. She's a, she's a, uh, you know, she's a saint. She's a, she's a you know, beautiful person and, uh, and she's saved. I have no doubt about that. But God doesn't want his saved children walking around in darkness or believing, uh, you know, believing things that are going to wind up getting them killed. You know, he, he wants everybody to make it through. Uh, so he's trying to straighten her out. So she had a dream. Are you ready to play that one, Seth? I am, and I want to say, uh, 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 Bienvenidos a Ministerios Jesus Viene Ya from Mexico. So we have a, 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 a ministry from uh, Mexico that uh, joined us today. And uh, they're, they're, hey, on the, they're on the same page. Jesus is coming soon. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And for those who don't uh, understand Spanish, what does that translate to? Uh, for those um, Jesus is no coming living soon. Being Whoop, should ever on. eat processed food uh, for every single meal of their hang, life. Hang on. Hang Good, on. real food is simple. It looks like Hold food. It smells like food. Hold Sorry on. about the commercial. Yeah, I'm going to try to, you know how YouTube now throws commercials on everything? You can't Yeah, even... you have to get, uh, there's something you can get, but anyway, yeah, I've talked to Brother Martin, if, if you don't know what to get, maybe somebody in the audience knows what to get to keep yeah. that from happening. Yeah, yeah, because I have it queued up, hold on. Um, yeah, they'll be putting commercials in our live broadcast pretty soon, if they can, they'll, they'll jump in the middle of our broadcast and show a commercial. 
It's uh, yeah, I'm not amazing. sure how to play it without that first commercial. No. Well, segment. go ahead and play it, but hit, but hit the at three seconds, hit skip, and it'll go back to the video. Yeah. Wait, in other words, the way you start it is fine. So it plays the commercial for three or four seconds okay. or five seconds, and then you can hit skip. <laughs> so just everybody. Oh, here we go. There we go. So look at her. You got to read between the lines. Look at her face. Look at everything. Okay. Um, her whole paradigm is shaking. You can tell. Six, her whole paradigm is shaking. Morning, 6.42 to be exact. And I just woke up. Um, the Lord just gave me the scariest dream. And when I woke up, I was just like so freaked out. And he was like, Crystal, get up and it right now and I was like oh because I'd always say in my videos that it's best to record like right when you wake up from the dream because the emotions that God's trying to give to us that were the emotions we're feeling he wants us to know like and feel that like when we're explaining the dream you know so sorry for looking like a mess but um just gonna be obedient it doesn't matter what i look like on camera so um wow okay i was so scared um so he gave me this dream and it was about war and it was war in America. Again, he's already given me dreams about this. Oh my gosh. And so it starts out in my dream where um, I'm sleeping in this house. It's not like this house, but I was sleeping in my house, even though it looked different. And I was just sleeping real good and I heard this really, really, really loud thunder and lightning thunder sound. Boom, 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 boom. It was so loud it felt like lightning was literally hitting my house multiple times, like hundreds of times. It was just like boom, 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 boom. It was so loud. And I had this feeling, uh, I had this feeling of that my father's presence was there. Like my father was there and I realized that when, now that I'm awake that that it, it's God's presence was there so in the beginning God's presence was there and there was just like really really loud thundering it scared me so badly but at the same time not scared like that I was in trouble like I wasn't in trouble it was like I felt protected under this really loud like god because it was god you know so like that's not for me you know um and yeah so i was just closing my eyes picturing it you know so i'm closing my eyes to remember it since it just happened and <sighs> so that happened first and then I was up rushing around and there were other people with me and we were getting, uh, we were getting food and water to put into the car because we only had time. And I remember being outside and I saw airplanes in the sky that were just like colliding and falling and like uh, there was war all around and they were they were just like shooting and um yeah just like bombs going off everywhere and it felt like nighttime too it felt like it was at night well yeah i was asleep so i guess it was and yeah it was just like the most scariest scene and the feeling was just like so terrifying to just have like bombs dropping all around you and like feeling so scared 
And um, I started saying to the people that, I said, it's going to be okay. God's people know what to do. God's people were were told in advance what to do, uh, where where to go when this comes, and um, and I had this feeling of I don't know if rapture had already happened or was literally about to happen, and um, it was just like so much build up, so much build up. I just felt like the rapture had just happened or it was about to happen. We were like so close. And, um, and so I said, all you need to do is get non-perishable foods and water, get the water, get the non-perishable foods. And you know, it would be like rice and noodles and, you know, things that like don't perish in pretty much hot or cold environments. You know, it's like dry food, um, something like, you know, something that like Joseph would store, you know, in the silos and stuff when they stored for that famine and whatnot. But yeah, I was just like unperishable foods and water. I was like, make sure you get the water, get all the water, get the water, get the water bottles. I was telling people like, do you got everything? Do you have everything? Okay, come on. We're going to, we got to get going. We got to get going because we only have this small amount of time to get going, to go to where we have to go. God's giving us, he gave us a time frame. We only have a short, a short window. We have to get our stuff and we have to get going. We have to get out of here. And I saw like a picture of just straight into the mountains. It was like just straight deep into the mountains somewhere that we had to go like right away. You had to get, get your stuff, go to the mountains because it was just like crazy chaos everywhere. You couldn't stay at your house. You had to leave. You had to leave and go into the mountains. And I think it was also like, it was going to be somewhere that was close to streams of water. So it was also going to be somewhere we did have some kind of access to water, like a, you know, like a river stream that comes down mountains and stuff. Oh my goodness. It was just so scary. It's just so scary. I was like shaking. Oh, uh, my hands, I, my body. I just felt like the terror of how scary that moment was. And that's everything I can remember. I also felt the presence of the presidents, like, like they were involved. They were dealing with what was going on. I don't know what presidents, but just that the presidents were, you know. You can cut it here, says if you want. Dealing okay. with. What's better for? There we go. Okay, very good, very good, very good. All right, so uh, I, I encourage everyone to watch that first at least 30 seconds uh, several times and read between the lines and uh, look at what's going on. She had a powerful anointing. She still does, she, but she had an anointed dream, and she was coming out of that anointing. And uh, and then back, the more she talks, the more she talks herself back into the pre-tribulation rapture. And uh, <laughs> it's hilarious to watch because God's telling her, you know, this is the great tribulation, you know, get ready, you know, get get out of there, get to the mountains. You know, now's the time, you know, in other words. And yeah, it's it's a little bit like Joseph where, you know, God came in a dream and told him that Jesus' life was in danger and and, uh, and he needed to get out of there. And if he hadn't got up, got up and got out of there, uh, he might, he might, you know, he might have died. You know, the, you know, the the whole family might have died. But, uh, uh, you know, but again, God is moving right now and telling people like her, uh, because she has a large channel and she's a beautiful sister. Uh, in other words, personality-wise, the heart of the Lord, and she looks beautiful too. In other words, she says, "I look all messy. I just woke up." 
He looks like an angel from heaven. I don't know where these women get this stuff. And they, <laughs> they look at the God made women beautiful. So don't worry about it. They're all beautiful. But anyway, women sometimes think they're not beautiful. But anyway, they're always, God made them all beautiful. So anyway, uh, she's, so she's a woman. But uh, the, the point here being that she had a powerful dream, a powerful anointing. She always had an anointing, but it's an extra powerful anointing. The anointing come, can come to different degrees. And so that dream was definitely from the Lord. And she's basically trying to talk herself out of it, that it's, it is God warning her about the tribulation period. She's by the by the middle or the end of the dream, uh, she's of her telling this experience. She's back to, oh, it's just a war. It's just a war. It's not the great tribulation. It's uh, we're gonna get raptured first. It's free, you know. So she's basically, you can tell at the beginning that she's definitely got a word from the Lord, and the Lord, word from the Lord is we're about to enter the great tribulation. Get ready, you know. Get get to the mountains. Get to whatever, whatever he's telling her. Get ready. And she's like, uh, well, you know, <laughs> she's like, you know, I know it's just a war. Can't be that. God must be wrong. And God, you know, but anyway. <laughs> It's interesting. We'll keep. We'll just keep God, asking God to make it more clear to her. Maybe send her the right person to minister. If anybody knows how to reach her, I'll talk to her. Uh, you know, anybody should try to reach out to her to help her because I know she's sincere. And there are a lot of them that are sincere, and a lot of them will wake up when the great tribulation intensifies, which, mm -hmm. you know, maybe another year or whatever. As it continues to intensify, every day it's intensifying. As it continues to intensify. Uh, it hadn't officially hadn't even started yet, but you can see it intensifying already. So maybe it has started. Maybe I'm off a couple of days. I don't think so, but uh, you know, maybe I'm off a couple of days. But uh, yeah, in the last three or four days, so much stuff is happening uh, that it almost makes you think it's already happened. But um, and now the mark of the beast is being introduced. Uh, you know, that's huge. Uh, that's absolutely huge. And of course, all the Seventh Day Adventists, which is the third largest. See, so you got the Catholics largest in this area of the world. And then, uh, and then Muslim, Muslim, Muslim second, and then Seventh Day Adventist third, and then uh, uh, all the others. I don't know which is fourth, but anyway, the, uh, you know, the Baptist probably fourth, and then you know, there's a bunch of Jehovah's Witnesses, there's a bunch of uh, uh, all just all these others, you know, even Pentecostal and all that, you know, which is you know, this is good, uh, you know, the power of God, and the, at least the Pentecostals understand that to some degree, and of course, full gospel is great. We're interdenominational, in other words, all denominations. Some people like used to refer to that as to non-denominational. Yeah, if you want to say it that way, it's fine. But also, interdenominational means we, you know, we love everybody. We're all together. You know, people ask, "What denomination am I?" And people ask me that all the time. And I say the same as Jesus. You know, he's he's interdenominational. He's all denominations. You know, he loves them all. He's, he's entering into all of them and trying to bless people and help people and get them uh, out of the world and into his kingdom and uh, get, them, get them saved, you know, get them into salvation. And there are different levels that you can operate in God. So anyway, so this dear sister, look again, uh, she looks like an angel, has the heart of an angel, loves the Lord, uh, and, uh, and, and yet she's, you know, I'm confused on this one point. Uh, which I was at one time too. So anybody that can reach out to her, do so and talk to her. Or uh, you know, if you know, if you can give me her phone number or let me know how to reach her, I'll talk to her. Um, you know, it's uh, again, there's, and there's a lot of people like this that need somebody to talk to them that understands the whole thing. And I'm happy to do that. That's uh, that's my job. That's one of my jobs in the kingdom of God. So I'm happy to do so. Um, so anyway, thank you for playing that, Sister Maria. And if the if the commercials play, just let them go three seconds or five seconds, whatever you have to, and then hit, you know, hopefully, hopefully that always works. Sometimes they're on my screen. Uh, sometimes they are like 20 seconds long and you got to wait for the whole thing, but you can hit mute. Usually you can yeah. mute what they're saying. So that, that helps. And then you have to wait, you know, whatever, you know, it's, it's just, it's just, we got to deal with what we got and do the best yeah. we can. With what we can. So, and we apologize to the listeners uh, that that happens sometimes. But I think our listeners all understand, too. They, uh, yeah, some of them have podcasts. There was a lady who called me up, sister who called me up yesterday, and um, and she's going to get healthy also. She's, uh, yeah, she's a nice sister, very nice sister. Okay, so did we catch everything on the questions and comments? I believe so. If not, uh, please post your question again and um, to make sure we answer them all. And I will put a link to um, 
to the Mark of the Beast uh, video in the description of this uh, live cast uh, after, afterwards, as well as I'll, I'll turn the prayer into a uh, Google Doc and upload it and then point, uh, have a link pointing to that so you can download that prayer. Okay. And, and maybe, we got it. maybe we should say that prayer again because we got, when we said it, there was maybe uh, 10 or 12 people on, but now there's, I believe, uh, 30, 32 people. Excellent. So, Excellent. Yeah, you, you can say uh, again at the, maybe at the end, at the closing. What okay. do you think? We're, yeah. we're not there yet. I, I wanted to go over a few more of these. I see here Sister Mary Jordan. Uh, she says, God bless you all. Sister Maria, maybe you could encourage everyone to go drive the highways and pray against the spider invasion and to go to local bodies of water and cover them in the blood of Jesus. And since Sister Mary Jordan, her and her, uh, her good sister that does a lot of things with her, almost everything is uh, Jerry. Uh, they drove down the Highway 41 and went into warrior mode, I-41. So that's the one that was in the video. And the Holy Spirit led us. So they, they already have been doing it. So she's encouraging everyone to go into warrior mode and, and, and command the enemy and, uh, and don't let him uh, carry out his evil plans. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be, um, yeah, it's going to be cyber warfare as well, which it already is ongoing, but it's going to be ramped up a bit. Uh, that's another Thing that's going on that people don't realize uh, I think uh, is that uh, and I, I had forgotten about because I don't do that part of the ministry we do get attacks every day and brother watchful was saying he gets attacks like every five minutes and there so he's got a he's got a system that tells you when they're trying to come in and stops them and so sister Maria you're kind of up on that stuff too is that is that correct that is yeah. correct there's about 33 million plus attacks a day it's amazing that the computers keep working as good as they do. It's amazing that they work as good as they do, considering how many. So we must, we must be getting attacks every five minutes. Same as watchful, it's just we don't know about it. But uh, the advantage with my MacBook is, if it's not working right, I can just shut it, shut, just turn it off, wait five minutes, turn it back on, and it's usually fixed. Ninety-nine percent of the time, it's fixed. There's a few things that don't fix, but you know, so or it seems to be fixed. It seems to be working properly. So, anyway, that's the advantage. Brother uh, Ted Smith, my understanding you have a mission in the Philippines. We have multiple missions worldwide. 200 missionaries have been sent out here. You know, so it's hundreds. Uh, it's way bigger than people think. And as far as I know, no other organization is doing anything uh, that I know of. As far as missions or help feeding the poor or teaching the gospel. I once in a while I run into Mormons. And one time Jehovah's Witnesses over here. And that's it. I've never run into any other Christian group, you know, there's all these feed the children and stuff like that. I run into them all the time, but all they're doing is taking up uh, hotel space when there's a disaster, and then they hand out poison rice to everybody, to little bags of poison rice. To, you know, it just it's ridiculous. They save the children and feed the children and all that. They're doing nothing. I, I'll tell you that if they're doing something, I challenge them to tell me what they're doing. I'll go look at it and see if it's true, uh, because I'm very skeptical about them, uh, about any of these that people give to. Uh, yeah, I've, I've never seen them giving. I've never seen them helping. I've never seen them winning souls. I've never seen them feeding children. Uh, anything we're supposed to be doing, um, I've never seen them do it. And I've been doing this all my life. So I think I would have seen them by now if they're really doing anything important other than taking up all the hotel spaces. That's not important. When people have a disaster, you need those hotel spaces for people that, you know, that don't have a home to sleep in, you know, if they can afford it, obviously, you know. And, of course, uh, if the hotel owners were really godly, they'd be opening them up for free uh, for, you know, at least a few weeks to help people get back on their feet, um, which we do that here, by the way. Uh, we open up land spaces for free for people to come and stay when there's a big disaster. And we got people living down on the lower levels. Uh, we, this property is a mountain, so, you know, there's different levels. Let's say it that way. Um, the top here is for God and for me. And, and, and and we're a majority. Now, people come here to get healed uh, all the time. So if they can make it to the top, uh, if they can make it through the test to get to the top, then, uh, then uh, you know, they get ministry. So the top here is, is for ministry. And, of course, the children play up here, too, And it, when I'm not online. When I'm online, I try not to let anybody bother me uh, when I'm teaching. Uh, yeah. So moving on. Uh, let's see. I prayed for my husband. This is Sister Lorena. And I saw a demon in the shape of red eyes. 
I was very awake, just could not talk. Okay, so she's she's uh, trying to get her husband delivered, sounds like. I saw things three nights, and last one, I called the name of Jehovah and never saw it again. Yeah, I just call the name of Jehovah first, and then you can skip the other two. You can sleep better the next two nights. <laughs> so, yeah, Jehovah. Uh, which is probably more correct, but Jehovah's fine. Uh, you know, God knows uh, when you're calling on Him, and uh, and same with. And you know, some people just like to call Him Lord, and that's fine too. Um, you know, in all big capital letters. You know, that's the way I picture it in my head. You know, Lord, uh, Jehovah, capital letters, Y H W H. Yeah, whatever you like to picture it. Yeah, you call on the name of the Lord, and or the name of Jehovah, and the Lord uh, Jehovah is a strong tower, and Jesus too is a strong tower. And into it, the righteous run and are given protection. It says that, and so we can we can spiritually run into that tower anytime we need to, and we're given protection. So if the armies of the of the Antichrist are coming out to get you, uh, you if you don't if you call down fire and they don't get roasted right away, you can run into the tower of the Lord, and He's going to protect you. And he'll probably go right. The armies will be looking all over for you. You might be standing right there, and they can't see you. Uh, and, you know, God will give you protection, and uh, and this is absolutely. In many cases, uh, Sister Mary has had deliverances like this. I, I don't think she'll mind me using her first name because there's a lot of sisters named Mary. So, uh, so anyway, uh, anyway, uh, she might be a guest and talk about it sometime. Uh, so we, she will be. She's already agreed to be. So just maybe next week we'll get her on to talk about her deliverances, uh, one or two or three, and share share some of that. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, there was a sister who asked about deliverance. Um, where was that? I saw that early on. If if you could post that again, I'm I'm scrolling and scrolling, but um. Well, yeah, if you need deliverance, uh, yeah, I'll um, you know, you can call in right now, and we'll put you in touch with. Uh, Either Sister Maria can do it right live. We're on our two-hour mark, so we can also you can send an email, and uh, and uh, the email address is the simplest one to remember is wits, or you just go to our website and you know click email. But or you can just email us at wits. Uh, that's with one t, wits, twenty fourteen at yahoo.com. And the reason they don't have two t's is because uh, somebody had already taken the two t's or something. You know, sometimes when you're trying to get a certain uh, email address, they'll tell you that one's already taken, which is bizarre because I don't know why. But anyway, apparently the one with two T's was taken because our ministry has two T's, but we just tried it with one T and it went through. So that's why we got wits2014 at yahoo.com with one T. And um, let's see. So ham radio and amateur radio is what, to, so ham radio is what you want if you want worldwide. But you won't when when the things get bad. You won't be able to trust everything on there. There'll be plenty of uh, disinfo people coming in from the government, pretending to be, you know, your neighbor 20 miles away or 100 miles away or 500 miles away, uh, you know, and saying stuff that's opposite of what the truth is. Uh, so, the radios are somewhat useful, but you still have to use discernment, similar to YouTube nowadays or 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 uh, you know a lot of platforms nowadays and even television nowadays if you still watch television but some people do um, yeah you have to use discernment in other words okay we got uh, mysterious mysterious Jesus being yeah that's probably somebody from that ministry it says yes the Lord Jesus is coming back 2027 amen 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 it's gonna be exciting going to be exciting. Uh, and it wouldn't surprise me he started doing big stuff even in 26. Uh, well, of course, the big stuff, when the, when the armies of the Antichrist come out here, I don't know if they come out today. If they come out today, I'm going to call down fire on them. And hopefully it's close enough for God that he's, uh, he'll, let, he'll bring the fire. <laughs> so, so he might start doing big stuff today. Uh, we're ready. Uh, when, he's, when he's ready, we're ready. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's getting close. Uh, let's see. You see anything else we should cover? Uh no, that's that's it. I'm pretty sure. Okay, here's a lady. Well, a brother. Or well, somebody called Scooby Snacks <laughs> is 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 promoting a lady prophecy. I guess a prophet, prophet maybe. It's called the channel's called His Master's Voice. So I'm guessing that's. Uh, it says prophecy blog, 
but so maybe it's not YouTube, but maybe it is. And uh, some people do call their YouTube channel a blog or video blog. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's a lady because he says uh, Scooby says that she has been delivering prophecy since 2019. So I don't know. I can't endorse anything, but uh, not her because I, I can I can endorse things if I've looked at them and been involved with them a little bit. Uh, but I don't know anything about her. I do know a number of. Uh, you know, a number of prophets are not prophets, they claim to be. A number of them that claim, I listened to Sid Walt Roth two years in a row, 2020 and 2021, and he had at least 100 prophets on, so-called prophets on, and it was a prophecy special, they're like six hours long, and uh, every one of them made a short prophecy, I think they got like three minutes or something, or five minutes, every one of them made a short prophecy about that year and the next 10 years, and every single one of them was wrong, except one, out of 200 people uh, claiming to be prophets, Christian prophets. All the big names that you ever heard were there, all of them. They were all wrong, 100%. And none of them knew, not even one knew we were in the tribulation period. Not even one. Not even one. So, uh, you know, a lot of these people are not prophets. They think they are, but they're not. They may have had a prophetic insight from time to time, you know, and, and sometimes people get that and they think they're a prophet and that doesn't make you a prophet. Uh, God will let you know if you're a prophet. He'll talk to you. He'll pull you out of your body and talk to you and and he'll tell you, use the, use the term prophet from now on in your ministry. And, yeah, and if you don't do it, then you're in trouble with God, you know, so, you know, so anyway. Um, yeah, so if there's any doubt, you're probably not. Uh, it's, yeah, most likely you're not. Uh, yeah, so he does give prophecy to everybody. But that doesn't mean you're a prophet. And this is where people miss it big time. Uh, yeah, a prophet would know we're in the tribulation period and we're about to enter the great tribulation period. I mean, it's like the most important thing that ever happened, you know. Right. And it says right. God won't do anything unless he lets his prophets know about it first. So that tells you right there if they're a true prophet or not. If they don't know where we are in the timeline, they are not a true prophet. It's that simple. Um, yeah. But, you know, God can wake people up and he can call new prophets and he can give people the anointing. Uh, for to be a prophet at any time when he wants to as he desires and he does have uh, I'd, I'd say dozens of real prophets right now on this planet but i don't know that many of them but uh, a few i know a few yeah well the one we had on brother uh uh he's a young prophet um brother uh dalton dalton mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh, young prophet good good brother good brother recommend he has his own channel recommend it i recommend it yeah Let's see. You might want to add pauses to discuss things to avoid copyright strike. Okay. All right. Well, that's a good that's a good point uh, from Brother Eddie. So in the future, sis, when we show a video, I think if you show part of it, it's the same thing as adding a pause, honestly. Uh, but um, we we did just show part of it. Uh, I think the one the one with the spiders. Did we show that one on here? I think we did. Right. We showed the whole thing. Um, not the whole thing. I can't oh, okay. remember. Yeah, yeah, I think as long, as long as it's in part, it's kind of like you're advertising their channel for them, so I don't think anybody should, should complain. Uh, yeah, that's my opinion. But anyway, um, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, okay, well, great comments and questions. We've got about seven minutes over. I hope I didn't miss anything important. Again, if I do miss you, uh, anything important, do call in, and that's next week, of course. Next, next, not next week, but we're twice a week. So next program, which is Mondays and Fridays on United States time, Mondays and Fridays, and that's Tuesdays and Saturdays for if you're in the Philippines um, or if you're in Israel. But um, um, anyway, Mondays and Fridays for United States, and um, same time as this one started, which is seven eastern in the united states and uh yeah she is getting headphones so thank you guys for re recommending those <laughs> so that you won't hear her typing and uh, uh or the dogs barking or <laughs> and my voice yeah, will yeah. be louder for steve for brother steve <laughs> Yeah, and uh, we didn't hear the dogs barking uh, this time, so thank they've, you. Thank they've you. they've been good. They're here. It's uh, it's snowing okay. outside, so <laughs> the, okay. they're okay. quiet. Well, I I do have a head headphones, but uh, you know if 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 I if it's ever bad, I will try to find them and 
put them. I've had them somewhere, but I actually have three pairs, but I don't know where. I might have five pairs, but anyway, I'll have to look for them. Uh, things, you know, things when you have, you know, yeah. Anyway, you, know, you have as many people, uh, children, elderly, everything else you're dealing with. A lot of times, things get shuffled around. Somebody's doing you a favor, and they're cleaning the house, which needs it, you know, the building or whatever, and which is great. But then you have to go to look for something, and it's not there, and you're trying to find it, and it takes an hour, two hours to find it, and you find out they moved it around, and they, or they threw it out. They thought it was garbage. They threw. One of my important notebooks that has it disappeared. Uh, all the, the engineering diagrams and everything. And I'm pretty sure they threw it out. I seen it burning, burned. I seen the cover, but burned. So somebody threw it out. It's just uh, these. We love these people. It's wonderful. They do favors for me, but sometimes I don't need these favors. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, anyway. So we love them. All right. Well, that's it. Uh, thank you all did, for joining us. Did you want to say the prayer? Because we have a lot of people yeah. on now, and I think it would yeah. be really good. Okay, yeah. so let, yeah, let me sure. Go. One more time, uh, one more time on the prayer. Okay, All this is Brother right. Hagen's. Let me, yeah, Brother Hagen's prayer. So let me. Yeah, go over it's there. excellent. It's excellent, and of course, you guys can change it and pray whatever you want as the Lord leads. Uh, but uh, this is a good prayer, and Sister Maria found it and she typed it out, and uh, she she really likes it, and I think it's great too. So, uh, uh, is this the beginning or am I? Yeah, this go. is okay. the beginning. Yeah, give me a moment. Okay. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. Okay, so prayer for the manifestations of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So we all need to pray, and then we, of course, need to study and press in. And, and you know, it doesn't have to be this complicated of a prayer. It can simply be, you know, Lord, you know, I'd like this gift. Can you give it to me? And and if you can't, then, you know, you tell the Lord, if you can't give it to me, tell me why, what I need to change in my life. And a lot of times he will tell you something you need to change in your life in order to get it. Uh, you know, it uh, might be just simply humility or it might be unforgiveness or, you know, there's different issues people have. Uh, in other words, they don't have humility, they're lacking humility, uh, not willing to do the humblest tasks uh, for people and so on. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and pray this. Um, lift your hands and say out loud and let your hearts agree with it. So I wouldn't hurt to repeat or read as I read out loud. Heavenly Father, thank you for your holy written word. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the gifts and the manifestations of the Holy Ghost. Father, we desire all nine of them be to be made manifest among us. The revelation gifts, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the discerning of spirits, the vocal gifts, prophecy, diverse kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. We desire them all. We pray especially at this time that there would be a special manifestation an extraordinary manifestation of the power gifts special faith working of miracles gift of healings grant us O lord that your servants should be enabled to speak thy word with boldness by stretching forth your hand to heal the signs and the wonders the gifts of healing the working of miracles special faith with the manifestations in a greater measure than we have seen and heard read now or by Right, read now, it says, uh, by, or know anything about. Okay, yeah, bigger than we've read of is what he means, read of, and uh, or know anything about. Grant it, O Lord. And then in the name, as above every name, the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now, Father, we claim, we count it done, and we praise you, Father, and we will continue to pray along that line. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the answer we we, we thank you for the manifestation. We thank you for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 All right, so uh, it's a good prayer. And so, yeah, if you want more of God, yeah, it's amazing how many people act surprised when I tell them I hear from God every day. And they just can't hardly believe it. I, I guess, yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway, they, they don't understand. Most people do not understand that God speaks in a lot of different ways. When your car is flipping over and he suddenly tackles, sends an angel and it tackles, or maybe it's the hand of God. I don't know. One of them grabbed, somebody grabbed the back of the car and pulled it backwards. Otherwise, it was flipping this way. And they grabbed it and they pulled it backwards. And when that happens, that's God speaking to you. He's telling you something. He's telling you he wants you alive and well, he's got more work to do. <laughs> he's there to rescue you. And uh, he loves you. He's telling you a lot of things. And uh, people can't, you know, I don't know why people have trouble with this. He speaks in many different ways. It's when you get a sudden word of knowledge, you know something. It could be anything. That's God speaking to you. Uh, you just suddenly know that you know that you know. That's that's God speaking to you. 
You don't know how you know, but you suddenly know. And it could be a dream that you had earlier that you forgot. It could be an experience you had earlier with the Lord you forgot. It could be uh, that your child needs your help and you forgot. Uh, you know, and or you don't know about it. Your child's far away or whatever. You know, you know, if it's a grown child, you might be supposed to pray for that child or, or you know, it could be anything. God can, that's God talking to you, by the way. People think God don't talk to them. I think God talks to everybody every day. It's just they don't know it. They're they're too uh, uh, maybe blinded by the devil to think they're not getting talked to by God. Uh, I think God talks to everybody every day, even the lost. I've had the lost tell me stuff, like uh, you know, the like one guy. I remember he was in a deep mine, working, and the Lord told him to get out of there, and he didn't want to get in trouble with the boss. He taught, in other words, that that mine that mine shaft was in danger of collapsing. He wasn't sure. He thought it was his imagination. Uh, so the Lord, his boss was an unbeliever. If the, the man that God told to get out of there, he was a believer. But the boss told him to signal the man and to have him come out. In those days, they, they did more signaling with lamps and stuff than they do nowadays. In different mines, it's still that way. Depends on what mine you're talking about. Anyway, they, he signaled him with the, the lamp to come out of that mine shaft. And when he came out, he says, yes, sir, what, what is it, sir? And he, he didn't know what to say to him. Uh, because he, the, the unbeliever simply had a word from the Lord that he was supposed to signal that guy to come out. So he signaled him to come out. And when he came out, he's standing there for a minute, not knowing what to say. And then while they're standing there, the whole mine shaft collapses. And uh, it'd have been dead if he hadn't come out. And, uh, and so, you know, that's God talking to the unbeliever. God talked to the believer first. The believer didn't listen, but the unbeliever did. <laughs> and, and thank God they're both saved. You know, if they, if they hadn't... Uh, if they hadn't obeyed, they might have both been dead. Uh, you know, the the yeah, the unbeliever might have thought it's a good idea to go in and talk to him. You know, and the you know, and the and of course the believer didn't even come out uh, until he was signaled to by his boss. You know, so uh, you know, so anyway, God does talk to people, and He does save lives, and He helps people through everything. Um, so yeah, so God bless you all. Let's see, is it? Uh, it, it says. Uh, Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. We covered that one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Very good, very good. All right. God bless you all. And next time, uh, yeah, until next time, may God's richest and best be yours. Amen.